All right, then let's get started. This is uh, I'm your host for today, Dan. If, you, if you're uh, new to my channel, if you've never seen any of my videos before, uh, thank you for watching. And I've never done this before. I did this with my brother, but he doesn't count. And I, I, uh, I, I love talking about Kiss. I know at least two of these guys that are here today. Uh, they know that, that, uh, that I love Kiss and everybody, all four of these guys love Kiss. So that's what we're going to do today. I'll give a, a little uh, brief introduction before I explain what we're going to do today. Uh, we'll start off with, uh, in, uh, for me, we'll go clockwise. I got Jason McMaster. Um, Jason, oh, this is going to take a long time for him. He's been in, he, he, he was the voice of uh, one of my, he knows this, one of my top favorite albums ever, the first Dangerous Toys album, and all the other ones were good too. Broken Teeth. Uh, I've got a Broken Teeth tattoo here. That's how much I love Broken Teeth. Um, Igniter, Cassius King, Evil United. Um, so some cover bands. Sick. We we were talking about that off camera before. Uh, a Kiss uh, uh, cover band, tribute band. Uh, De Niro Smith, an Aerosmith tribute band. Uh, did I say ah, Godzilla great. Motor Company? Um, this this guy does everything. He's in Dirty Looks now. So uh, so thank you, Jason, for coming here, going around the horn. Uh, Daniel DK from Exciter. And what the kind of funny thing about Exciter is, uh, I've been listening to Exciter since 1984, before I guess Daniel was even born. Yeah, like wow. long before. Let's not yeah. get that. Shit. <laughs> I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm not that old. Yeah, yeah, dude. I it was so cool. You came to that. Like we 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 hit it off right away. You came to that show in Toronto, the New Year's show, New which Year's. we were like launching the world into fucking pandemonium. Who who had any idea? I was like the second or third last show I played before COVID, and uh, lo and behold, you're front row in Toronto, and then you're front row in Mexico City. You're you're a real yep. one, man. Shit, yeah. Thank you. And uh, also in uh, now, what about Diamonds? Is Diamonds still active? I mean, like, we'll do, like, one show a year. If, if, the, when the Monsters of Rock cruise calls, the answer is always yes. That's okay, there we go. At, like, and, uh, pre play, I'm in Toronto, CeCe's off, we all, we all have other shit going on, but when we can get together, if it's once or twice a year, we, we still love doing it. Okay, and I mentioned DK's Army, too. There's a, a little merch yeah. promotion for you. Huge Kiss fan, DK is. Die and then, finally, die. down uh, in my bottom left, we've got the big Mick, Chris McLernan. Uh, and I realize as we were speaking, we've got two Mix and two Dans. Um, really? We yeah. maybe need uh, Daniel McMaster from Bonham to uh, to to <laughs> glue everything together. Yeah, so we've got the big Mick who who also gone, played on one of my anymore. who Daniel McMaster. Yeah, Daniel McMaster died of pneumonia about ten years ago. Oh, probably. I didn't know. Yeah. Oh, well then that won't be happening. Oh, there you go. In uh, memoriam. Uh, but Big Mick also played on another one of my very, very, he knows this also, one of my top albums, Devil in the Details, Saigon Kick. Also, Water could arguably, is is very close for me to being as good as Devil in the Details. Uh, Chris was also in um, uh, another uh, Kiss uh, tribute cover band, Cold, whatever you Cold call it, Cold Gin. Yep. Yeah, we called it the Exhibition. If you okay. missed the that was it. And uh, Big and Mick and the Curl. The guitar player from uh, Cold Gin did pretty good for himself. Okay. Yeah. And uh, so, so what? Cover band. Yeah, that's fucking sick. So a lot of Kiss, uh, Kiss fandom in the room here today. So what we're, uh, what I'm gonna do to explain, uh, you guys already know what we're gonna do to explain to, uh, to the, to the people watching what we're gonna do. We're gonna talk about these two masterpieces, Kiss uh, Alive and Alive 2. Uh, I got Kiss Alive in 1976. It was the first record I ever got. I was very young. I was six or seven years old. And um, it's, it's still my favorite album ever. And it's been a debate among, uh, I think we can all probably say we're Kiss nerds. Kiss nerds love to debate. Uh, and it's so easy to compartmentalize Kiss. You know, you've got the first three albums and then alive and then the next three and then alive too and then the, the four studio albums so it's very easy so there's there's always debate about well which is better alive or alive too or do you like the uh which of the solo albums is is your favorite so what we're going to do today we're going to put all that to rest and we're going to determine for each of us what is the uh our favorite kiss albums for me alive jason quickly which do you prefer generally speaking alive or alive too alive alive dk alive three Three. Oh, all right. A little uh, off the grid there. Okay, I like that. Big I, Mick. I like, I like Kiss as a metal band. It's kind of cool. That could be an age thing. 
Could be. You're, you're younger than, than us. It could yeah. be. I know a lot of people that if they discovered Kiss in the 80s, they're going to have a very different opinion. Uh, Chris, Alive or Alive 2 or 3? Uh, alive 2. Uh, no, Alive. Um, trivia note for Alive 3. I'm in the audience uh, there for that one. So I'm on a Kiss record, technically. Wow. Awesome. Which show? Indy, Indianapolis? Uh, Detroit. At, uh, the, uh, or oh, Michigan at the, um, what was it, the Woodland? Palace Road? of Auburn Hills. That's it. Wow. Who's that Very show? good. And um, Gene, Alice. Um, um, at uh, some offstage, backstage, sort of, and after he did the fire, and he threw, threw, saw me, smiled through his pick, hit me in the chest, so I got that around here somewhere. Nice. Cool. All right. I like that. So what we're going to do is we're going to we're gonna go through these uh, Alive and Alive 2 track by track. So we're going to compare the two first tracks, the first second track, and everybody's just going to pick a favorite. Feel free to embellish, to justify your reasoning, explain your answer, uh, whatever we want to do. So I've, I've got them all written down here so I don't make a mistake. Uh, so we'll start with obviously the first one, Deuce from Alive and Detroit Rock City from Alive 2, the opening songs, two, uh, the two maybe still iconic Kiss opening tracks. Uh, who wants to jump in first and say their favorite? Uh, I'll jump in. Um, Deuce. Um, reason being, um, it's lasted as an opener, as you pointed out. But also, they didn't have to recreate the production that Detroit Rock City is. What always disappointed me was when they went into the solo, it just kind of went, because that solo is so huge on the record, thanks to Ezrin. And it just was like, mm, not killing me, not killing me. So Deuce always wins for me. Okay. Anybody else? I... I have to agree uh, the points that Chris is making are huge, but it's not something that I would have immediately thought of uh, in my sort of like knee jerk answer. If you would have asked me if I would have jumped in first, because um, I think and not to go too far from the tree, um, Detroit could be and this is, of course, just my opinion the best kiss song uh i i love the songs on hotter than hell i think that you know going blind and and uh you know strange ways and shit like that which are not on these live records are right. fucking dirgy metal sludgy strange they, ways they, they they weren't even trying to be that kind of a thing they right. were just they just wrote songs hey i got this song and it's slow and it's got this rumble and those fucking songs i'm going off on a tangent sorry but i do think that detroit rock city could be like their peak it's their tom sawyer you know what i mean it's oh, it, yeah. it's they they figured out how to straddle the line of this you know kind of glammy you know kind of like boogie woogie thing and still be and I love the fact that it's uh it's, it's like C sharp riff you know it's all based off of a C sharp so they can play the open you know when you learn how to play that song you go wow that's fucking cool you know when you're young and you learn how to play that I love that and then the uh, there's all of these things that I'm pointing at Detroit Rock City but I have to go with Deuce because of uh you know i'm just kind of going off of what chris said really to give him credit dude uh that song is like lending itself to uh what what detroit can't can't do from like a uh a, a more of a harder edge i think like i said it's less glammy you know what i mean right it's, it's a little bit more like this anthemic marching kind of a yeah. Uh, and the, the double vocal and the harmonies and stuff like that, instead of the get up, you know, kind of, you know, which is, I don't know, a little bit silly when you kind of put connect, set them side by side. There's a, there is a difference as an opening song, but, uh, the reasons yeah. they have, you know, the, they're two completely different records in my, in my head. But if I had to pick one, I'd probably go with Deuce because, uh, yeah stuff chris said and then it's you know it's the record i got after i got probably dressed to kill so. okay good explanation dk what say you i mean i i agree with everything that's already been said i think detroit rock city is totally the peak but i think it speaks volumes that i'll be the third person to also pick deuce over what is arguably one of the best songs ever written 
um, coordinated dance moves and all. I love the way it's done live as well. Yeah. A little, it's a little longer. It's got a little more energy. And, like, there is no better way to start a Kiss show than with that fucking riff. It's so cool. Yeah. It's got yeah. one of the coolest yeah. riffs ever. I'll, and I'll, yeah. I'll make it for Deuce for me. It was the first... Uh, for no other reason other than, as I said, Alive was the first record I ever got. So Kiss was the, I mean, Deuce was the first, uh, I guess, real, I guess I'd heard Elvis songs at that point. And, but Kiss, uh, Deuce was the, the really first, I guess, metal or hard rock song that I ever uh, heard. Still has a, a good place for me. And it, it says a lot about how good the song is if we're all choosing it over Detroit Rock City, which could arguably be their their signature song. So That's, uh, why, that's why I kind of threw, that's why I kind of, got on a tangent about detroit because holy shit it's it's the song is magically written but yeah, yeah. uh chris's thing about Ed, that could have been all ezrin it could have been you know the production the the way it was mixed and and uh and and i, I never thought about it not hitting me lie in a live sense like chris said again it's, yeah right. deuce, deuce goes up a notch from studio to live and it feels like detroit goes down one i mean but i mean yeah. Jake, you're saying you're dead on because they, they brought in Cooper's uh, producer. I mean, Bob Essen was coming from all that Cooper stuff. So it had to be theatrical, you know, with the intro and all that. And that was the first song I heard off that record. And I saw it actually, it was on the um, Paul, uh, Paul Lynn Halloween special. So yeah. I'd never, we'd heard Beth, I think, but th hadn't heard Detroit. And we saw it first. We're like, what the fuck was that? Yeah. So, and that wasn't even with the long guitar solo or any of them. We're just like, holy shit. What, I because you didn't see Kiss like literally live in those days. You had to go to the show. They weren't putting them on TV, and now he's in a prime time special. Like, oh my God! No wonder everyone loves this band. Yeah, yeah, and, and something that you said there that uh, that I would say for me, and and this is another you know a very common thing probably for Kiss nerds to talk about is this for me the songs from the first three albums I like them better than the songs from the second three studio albums I'm talking about, but the you know the. I think most people would agree the first three albums didn't sound that good. The second three sounded great, um, which I think is part of the reason why. So I, I think all the all the the Kiss Alive songs for me, all of them, all sixteen are better than the studio versions. Oh on Alive, yeah. On Alive too, because the those the the three albums that those were taken from, they sounded better. They didn't have as much room for improvement. So, some of them I did like them better than the studio. But some of my maybe like the studio version better, but Alive is 16 for 16 better than the studio versions. Yeah. yeah. Uh, all right, number two, track two, we've got Strutter versus uh, King of the Nighttime World. And since I was just talking all, for me, that's uh, King of the Nighttime World is one of my very, very top Kiss songs ever. I love the live version. So, and I do love Strutter. I love all these songs, but uh, for me, I would, I would have to go in a close one. I would go King of the Nighttime World. Wow. I, I think that I think that the one two punch of uh, like DRC into nighttime is like just it's it's like the album it's it's a perfect one two punch, um, but why is Strutter everyone's favorite Kiss song? Like when you talk to like the average person who likes the band, like Strutter is everyone's favorite song, and like I get it, I love the live hits, I like those you know the little things they do with it live, but dude, King of the Nighttime World's like next level songwriting. It's different for the band too. It's a little more whimsical. It's like a little more rock and roll party tonight. I love it. Um, oh, it's yeah. got that the cool harmony part, you know, like I, I, I think I think in, in a very close one too, because Strutter's got that raw energy and it's a little sexier. I think that I would go, I would go nighttime as well on that one, but it's very close. Okay. Uh, baseline, baseline as well. The baseline's in Detroit. And then the bass lines in King of the Nighttime World, when you think about the sort of Paul McCartney walking bass lines and the sort of like even faster disco, you know, speed, you know, that's in Detroit. And yep. that, 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 once again, that one-two punch just for Gene is like, he's having the most fun right out of the box on that. I might right. have to go with King of the Nighttime World just because of these things that are bubbling in the room right now. But... Uh, what Dan was saying about Strutter, I I love Strutter too, but it's almost like that. I mean, like uh, I I could hear like Bowie doing that. It's like a '70s star, you know, kind of glam. It's the sweet. The sweet could have done Strutter, and it would have been another like it would have powered up probably with another band doing it. The fact that Kiss wrote it, I respect that. 
and I love Strutter, but it's it's a it's another like you know Paul pulling his shirt over his shoulder and doing this kind of <laughs> pouty thing. It's one another one of those type of a songs, and that was the the thing that kind of added the uh, androgyny to Kiss, and and that's opening a whole other can of worms. But the point stays that uh, as far as the second song, I have to go to a live two with King. Okay, Chris. In interesting. It was a co-writer too. Kim Fowley. Kim Fowley. Kim Fowley. Kim Fowley. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Because back to your point, I'll, I'll give my choice in a second. But back to the point with um, him writing um, Detroit. That's an old riff called Acrobat for the Kissner. Oh, that's right. Yeah. yeah. And Peter always called that. That's the swing riff. What's with the swing bass line? What's that one? I'm like, what do you mean? What's that one? It's called Detroit Rock City, Peter. Sorry. <laughs> Um, out of the two, I would pick um, Nighttime Tight Race. Um, mm -hmm. better, but because the, their songwriting is so much better by that point, you got again, you got the Ezrin. It seems to be a better live track. You know, it's not so pro overproduced, not overproduced, but produced as Detroit. Um, and then because Strutter seems like after Deuce, you can't go up. You're going to have to downshift, you know, just a hair because it's Deuce is just that boom, you know. So you got to bring it back and, oh, yeah. I mean, what else are you going to say after that, you know? Um, it looks like we're going to have ourselves a rock and roll party tonight. Right. And then, you know, boop, 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 Peter, you know, destroys the drum intro. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's it's king of the nighttime world for me, I would say. Like I said, okay. tight. But I always like the intro, too. Ace just getting that feedback note every, he got it every time. Oh, perfect. Love him. All right. So we, we all agreed on the first two. Interesting. All right, yeah. uh, track three, Got to Choose from uh, from the first album and Meet Us in the Ladies' Room from uh, from Alive 2. We'll start with Jason this time. Wow. Again? Fuck. Yeah, that's really, <laughs> that's really tough. I think that the Beatles' influence is shining on both of these songs. Fuck, if not most. Uh, other yeah. than the deep cuts I mentioned earlier, that's there's no Beatles in that. It's all dirgy and doomy, uh, talking strange ways and going blind kind of shit. The yeah. uh, maybe going blind has a she's so heavy kind of a vibe to it. I don't know, but anyway, uh, yeah, good try. Yeah, good point. Yeah, but the uh, ladies' room it, once again is that Paul Stanley kind of glammy thing, even though it's a Gene. I call it a Gene song. Uh, it got to choose is like this once again it's dark uh and i love the song and i even love the studio version of got to choose uh because of the bad production because of how like crunchy and like you know just yeah. uh, there's something really cool about that and i also like it you can hear peter's voice you know better i think on the studio version uh, when they do the maybe you know kind of uh you know beatles thing right uh, yeah. ladies room live version is a little heavier and you know kind of like what we were sort of saying like oh alive is the shit because those first three records played live it's like judas priest unleashed in the east all the songs are on fire and when you hear the yeah, studio yeah. version they're all slow and the there's not even a gain stage on the amps you know it's all clean like malcolm <laughs> young and shit and the right, records right. are kind of done the same way if you get technical about how it's recorded or whatever or whatever gear was available or how yeah. well you knew the songs like we were talking uh, off camera about R when you write a song it's cool to play it live and try it on you, you know so you can address tempo and feel or uh, too many choruses whatever you do a rewrite later on before you record it in the studio these things hadn't happened yet either so that's why right. the versions on alive are really special but i'm gonna go to give an answer a solid answer i'm gonna go with ladies room just because i think it's crazier sounding in the way that i like uh the first album songs on alive if that that little ticket is working for ladies room on alive too so i'm gonna go with ladies room who's next yeah. Damn, I'll I'll take it. I'll I'll be I'll be easier. It's it's 
tough and it's close for me. The thing that's kind of striking me, and because I've never looked at these track listings side by side like this, yeah, no, it's, me neither. Me neither. It's, it's really interesting the parallels between the songs and like what's in the third slot here. Like both songs have a lot in common and a lot of the same things. It's really Good odd. Point. Um, I'm gonna go. Well, I love. They were building a live set. You know, they knew what they were doing. Exactly. Like it. Exactly. There, it's it's like like any 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 album or any any set list you got to build is done very purposefully and like you know you don't realize it till you stack them up side by side like this. It's brilliant track listing. Um, Ladies' room, awesome tune. Love the live version of it. But uh, got to choose just does something for me. It's like Paul Stanley's favorite song. He always loves to say that. Um, it grabs me, especially like that simple little lead in it. It's just really emotional. It's full of it's full of. Uh, it's darker as you said it's full of it's full of emotion I, i'm going got to choose my first yeah yeah got to choose got it that's it and now there's, I'll, I'll go next just because uh because dk mentioned the uh the, the first of the lead in uh in got to choose when i was a kid when i got this when i was a kid got to choose was one of my least favorites uh and then uh my best friend through high school and and through now even um he, he his that was his favorite and you know, sometimes hopefully you're influenced by uh, by other people in life, and and so he was always you know in love with that song, which kind of made me appreciate it older when I was maybe in my twenties. Um, Ladies Room is one of the the ones that I mentioned earlier that for me is better live than on the on the on Rock and Roll Over. Um, but I would go got to choose uh, DK. I think mentioned the solo. What a that might be my favorite. This is not something that I have like a real ranking of, but when I when I hear it. One of my favorite Ace solos, dun, dun, dun. and everybody, we could probably all sing this so. <laughs> Killer song. So uh, I, I like all these songs, but I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna choose. Got to choose. I like Clever, how they right. come back and and sing the chorus bits Ooh. at the last, at the last during the end of the solo. At the end, yeah. Oh. It's genius. So Beatle. So Beatle. Yes. The outro to the live outro. And then they hang. They hang on it. Down. Yeah. yeah. It's fucking really? heavy. Yep. Yeah, it's fucking awesome. Love it. Chris? That's hundreds of shows there. That's what that is. <laughs> um, the uh, I'm going with Got to Choose um, for two reasons. I like Ladies Room um, just because it's kind of your basic, you know, Gene Sater on the road kind of shit. Like, I don't care. I'll just meet you there. Just get in there. I don't. You'll just. I, I know. I'm wearing. I, I'm not changing. Just it's uh -huh. now. Or now. Um, so, uh, but there's they sentimental reasons. Everyone na nailed all the reasons I love, especially that the vocal that returns in the solo. I love that, and it's three part harmony. They always killed it. Um, but when we were doing, here's a, here's why. Here's the sentimental reason. When we were doing Cold Gin, the first night that they came up and saw us, right? They just showed up in the dressing room while we we're putting the makeup on. So um, Gene, Gene is standing at the wall like Gene does. He's just watching us. And this is after about 20 or 30 minutes. And you got to realize at this point, they're not playing like Got to Choose, I Stole Your Love, Hotter Than Hell, Firehouse. They're playing none of that in the set. So they haven't heard it in ages. So And we're about to do it. So Gene is standing over. He's watching us kind of with that Gene looking arm crossed whatever. And Paul's, I see Paul doing this. He's Paul's like right here, you know, just one. So I get, you know, kind of do this number and get a little closer here as I'm putting on stuff and just kind of start horning in on the conversation. And he goes, yeah, got to choose. You don't remember it? Nope, don't remember that one. Come on, what are you talking about? And he starts air guitaring and sings like, baby, are you know what? He's playing the G and the C and the D just you know, like literally like this. No guitar. He's just doing <laughs> like, G nope, no, nope, don't want you. No, nope, I don't know that one. Don't remember it. And he's like, see, he's singing the whole fucking verse and chorus. Just no one's watching him except me. And uh, he finally gets like, Woo! he's doing everything. And then Gene goes, no, nope, don't know it. And he goes, oh, you do too. And he walks off. I was like, fucking it. This is, I just saw a Kiss band fight. This is awesome. Man, I've heard that about there. Gene. He, he doesn't have, uh, he, he, he forgets a lot of stuff uh, yeah, from, their, from their old days. He's full of shit because you go, oh, what was that one tune? Um, it, was on, it was about an old guy going blind. You know, he won't blink. But if you go, oh, I love going uh, blind. You go, I don't know that one. Which which album was that on? I don't. What, what was that again? Who's the kitty cat? I, I don't remember these things. Mm -hmm. You know. Uh, all right, so we got uh, uh, we got that one down. We're up to number four now. Uh, number four what? is uh, uh, to oh. interject one thing on the Gene thing because I mean we're just going to talk about Kiss forever, right? Um, 
he's he's the one who's like most open to doing whatever though when it comes to like songs with the solo bands and stuff like the nashville dudes are just like yeah man like any song we want to play he's like if you'll teach it to me i'll do it he's like i yeah. if i can get the lyrics and you show me the fucking chords like any song from my solo record from any kiss album like he doesn't give a fuck versus ace is like we do the A set. Like, you know, Ace has always been the A set, will always be the A set. Gene, open, open minded to any fucking tune. You just got to teach. Oh, yeah. It. Oh, yeah, yeah. Let's do, let's do 2000 Man, Gene. Okay, sure. Just how's it going again? Yeah. He, he doesn't care. <laughs> he, just, he does like to play. He came up and saw us. Jamie had a jam in Tahunga called the Jamie St. James All Star Jam. And Gene came up one night and he called Jamie said, I, I want to come up and I want to jam with you guys. And G Jamie goes, You're an old guy. This is 1992. You're an old guy. You don't know any what we know. And he goes, I know Cat Scratch Fever. And Jamie goes, I got to see this. Wow. <laughs> so Gene came and he talked us into playing Mustang Sally, uh, which was fucking hysterical. But yeah, he I handed him the grabber and I said, here you go. I got to see this. And he goes, uh, they just rip into Cat Scratch Fever because Tommy Thayer knows every song on the planet. Um, and Gene killed it. Wow. You know, I was like... He's and he's playing it right. It wasn't like jamming through it. No, he knew it. Gene knew Cat Scratch Fever. It's like, okay, yeah. There's some bass walking in that. That's yeah. Well, yeah. Nugent always had good bass players. Yeah, yeah. And he played a lot on it too. But yeah, yeah. He's he's a pip. He's a pip. That old time. Love him. All right, we'll go to a good story, Mick. We'll go to number four. We're gonna get this place hotter than hell Woo! versus making love. Holy. Damn, this is not a fun game. Ooh, I know. I quit. Fun. I quit. <laughs> We're, what are we four in? And I quit. Yeah, Close your eyes. Uh, I, I, it's a fucking tie. I can't even. I love, love, love hotter than hell. It's got everything that I, a growing boy needs. Uh, it's a fucking serious song. Uh, you know, the boy meets girl thing uh it's very it's the ultimate paul stanley song but yeah then so, but then so is making love you know what i mean it's a fucking tie either way uh, from his from paul's eyes or me just being a, a googly-eyed fan uh making love that guitar riff is like fucking heavy it sounds like a it sounds like a like the guys in riot wrote it you know <laughs> you know it's it's like a new wave of british heavy metal riff from 78 or 77 or some shit and i'm like what uh i can't i can't choose i'm, I'm out i'm out close, <laughs> close your eyes and pick one this, this is for uh statistical purposes uh, you got to be part of the the solution hotter than, here hotter than hell okay hotter than hotter, hell just Jason. because that's where my that's the first one i I knew that before I knew Making Love, of course, right? All right, and I'll go next just because what Jason said reminded me of what uh, something why I'm choosing Making real, Love. Real, real quick, and this is, I guess this is for Chris more or less because he would know. If I recall, that song is an F and they and they used a capo. I use a capo. You are correct, so sir. Yeah. playing this fucking heavy metal riff with a capo on it. I'm like, hey, it's a Bob Dylan playing metal. What the fuck? <laughs> I remember that we double neck. You used the double yeah, neck yeah. on it too, yeah. Like, I remember jamming jamming along to the records when I was a kid and being like, hey, this song's in a different tuning than the rest. Like it didn't make sense. <laughs> I'm like, why why is everything off by a fret? I don't get it. Yeah. Right. It's right, fucking right. Yeah. Song. So cool. Yeah. Um I, I feel left out when you guys talk about like the, the, the nuts listening. and bolts of musicianship. I only like it as a as a listener. Yeah, sometimes. Uh, no, but the reason I'm going to say making love is, and I do, I'm going to say it again for every one. I love Hotter Than Hell, of course. But uh, making love, we were talking uh, before we started recording about uh, uh, Body Bags by Saigon Kick, um, Chris's old band. And I, I mentioned that that's my my least favorite Saigon Kick song because it's too heavy for, for a side. Even though they had heavy songs, I just didn't like that one. Now for me, and, and same with Skid Row, uh, I know everybody loves uh, Slave to the Grind. It was so heavy. I didn't like it because it was too heavy. For me, I, I thought the first Skid Row album was better. Um, but Making Love is, is one of the ones that I love. I don't want heavy Kiss. Kiss to me should be, uh, you know, it should be rock, hard rock, but it doesn't have to be heavy. But man, that, that riff, like Jason said in Making Love, that, that's, a, that's heavy metal. That, 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 that's so 
chuggy still, and still has the boogie woogie it's still kind of it's got the groove it still has the you know it's like tutti fruity yeah yeah, yeah. Whoa! It's like tutti frutti. It's like little Richard. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's oh, yeah. yeah. DK's it's, got it. It's all of those things, but it's also you know like and, this and, down down picking kind of riff, and you're like, and just oh, a, that's killer. A small small thing that I love about the live version of this, and um, you guys probably know this, is the it's such a tiny insignificant thing, but uh, I guess it's the last line of the of the second verse. When Paul says, yeah, you, you know, normally he would say, you're good looking, the best I've had making love. But he says, you're good looking. Woo! Yeah. I <laughs> love that. That's uh, it's such a small, insignificant thing. But that that song for me, that little tiny thing for me takes it to the next level. I will say making love. OK, OK, let's get real insignificant. That little feedback of in the beginning da, of the da, 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 And Ace that holds it. And he changes the vocal inflection a little, like, uh, do all the things that I want to do. Like, just the little thing in that song. <laughs> oh, totally, totally. I could have said that, too, yeah. That fucking insignificant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do the little, little. I want to do. Detail. Yeah. I love that. The live version's so great. I'm, Are you I'm sorry? Are you I'm going taking, making love? Oh, yeah, yeah. Easy. Okay. Harder Than Hell is, like, up there in, in some of my favorite Kiss songs, but it's like, uh... You know, it's it's got way more of like a a, a mid tempo kind of seventies kiss vibe, and like for whatever reason, making love sounds like it could be on revenge. Like it's wild. It's All fucking right. really. I love yeah. that. I've always thought it was one of the heaviest riffs, and yeah, yeah, heavy take all. Yep, yep, Chris. Oh, this is a tough one. Um, we'll call them now the insignificant points um, that are vital to it. On on hotter than hell. To me, I love the fact that it tells, it's a whole story, right? All the way from he goes to pick her up to, you know, show me how it been. You know, beautiful. Boom, strike out. Paul Stanley strikes out. What? Doesn't happen, right? What? So that's that's great too. And that, like like Jason said, it kind of, it's got that dirgy kind of, you know, dirt to it. Like, they, you know, they borrowed the amps to do the, uh, the, the studio version. But I got a, a game I like to play called Rock Forensics. I call it that. The, the make and love riff is essentially Lady Double Dealer from Purple off of uh, Stormbringer. Wow. So wh whoever can access it, just you know, check it out right now. But the insignificant stuff on making love that I just hate when the girl says "wait" and those um, the echo the delay is not digital and you know they don't, they don't have a tempo and it's not perfect. It's like gun, eh, 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 and off it goes. Like that's just so cool. It yeah. is so fucking cool. Um, so I think making love at that point in the set, I think it brings it up one, whereas, you know, hot and hell is really cool. Um, and it's the perfect end of the next song clearly, but making love is just, there's something about it, man. There's just there's something about it. There's just like, it's just jacking the show back up another level and, and okay. Stanley is just killer. I have a question. You know? I have a it's question. Being rejected in that one too. I, I just thought of it. Question for you, Chris. Does does it yes. bother you all of the things that we all love about it? Does it bother you, or is you don't care, or is are you attracted to it? That the fact that he's going making love, 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 and it's not really the same <clears throat> vibe right. that's happening on in the studio where it's like this sort of like angry making love, love, making love, love, where it's just like <laughs> right, right, burning right. crazy, like violent really, thing yeah. happening with the delay and the and the doubled vocal and a call and answer thing as opposed to live. He's just going, love, love. You know, he's just kind of doing this. Right. It, it, does that bum you out? Or, I mean, it didn't bum me out, but it's, no. it's so different. You're going, wait, what's a, oh, well, it's, it's live. Right. So they can't really... Right. right. I like that. And when they do that, make them up. That seems to work better for me uh, okay. because it, it, it gives the song a little chance to be like, uh, or like it's, um, I think Dana said with the, uh, I want to do that bit or the uh, love, right. you know, and all that stuff. And, and just kind of the sloppy ending. And just, it's like that, that one comes off better live. Okay. But maybe it's because they it came off of Rock and Roll Over, which they wanted to be more of a live record feel to it. So, sure. eh, I don't know. But um, it's uh, I just, his vocal on that one is just so good. It, he just kills it. I have another question. Is it really live? Depends on the song. Ah, okay. Well, listen to Strutter. Paul is magically singing backups with himself on the chorus. How yeah. did he do that? Yeah. You know? But yeah, yeah. Th there's um, there's some stuff out there on YouTube from the Wildwood, New Jersey show that's clearly the source material for a lot. 
Okay. I mean, you look good. it's perfect. But there's another one. Um, I think they said they recorded in Detroit, and it's like it should be perfect. But I think Ace's guitar is out of tune, so that's probably if they redid his guitar. That's the only reason why they play doctor. a great other one. Yeah, they had to doctor it. That's cool. That's totally fine. I just wanted to, because making love. I mean, it, that that could really be live. Sounds like it. Yeah. Raw. That's, where'd they do oh. that one? Was that at um the El Coliseum in L.A.? Was it the Forum? I think so. Yeah. Uh, forum or they they did. Uh, I think you know it, it's so weird. It's hard to remember. It, it you know they called it from like the Forum, Budokan and some some sound check stuff who knows for sure jersey well, yeah there's, yeah there's, new, yeah uh well, yeah the wildwood i think that uh, chris was talking about yeah or whatever it's called in new jersey yeah not yeah, to well, muddy the letters here like and i know stay on target but if this was reversed and we were talking about studio recordings i would easily take hotter than hell but if we're talking live recordings, a hundred percent making love. Yeah, and that's that's the point of this. I for me, and maybe I didn't mention that we're, we're comparing the the live versions. Yeah, because I would change maybe a couple of answers if uh, no, maybe yeah, maybe uh, there's there's maybe first. one maybe one coming up that I that would be different if we were doing studio. But uh, rock, no, good good point. Over, like as everyone's been saying, like the rock and roll over version is totally different, and the vibe is completely different, and right. it's it's it's. To me, a way cooler live song. Ditch all yeah. that studio shit, all that weird chorus stuff. Like that screaming, like love chorus is awesome. It's just Paul, it's yeah. like Raspy Paul doing Raspy Paul. I love it. Yeah, check, yeah make I, sure you check out Lady Double Dealer though. Just I'm curious to see what you guys think. Lady, Lady Double, Double Dealer, Deal yeah. yeah. Lady Double Dealer. It's on the Stormbringer record. We okay. have uh, there's, uh, there's a chat here. Whoever finds it, pop it in the chat. Is it is yeah. it an F? <laughs> <laughs> I guess if you're, if you're in Kiss and trying to play, yeah, it's an F. Wow. I, I'll check that out after. Uh, all right, moving on. Number five here, we got uh, Firehouse versus All Right, Love Gun. Dun -dun 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 -dun. Uh, remember, we're comparing the live versions here. Chris, you can go first this one. Oh, this is easy. Love Gun. Okay. Love Gun. It is just, Simple. talk about Stanley again, just on fire. The song's a little too fast. You know, Peter's like barely keeping up with it. Um, Gene and Paul are sorry, Gene and Ace with the love good. I mean, the New York accents coming out. I just, it's, I love the live version. Absolutely love it. Okay. That's, that's, that's no contest for me. BK for you. Easy love gun. Easy, easy okay. love gun. Best solo, too. Fucking so good. Just fun. Just fun, long, like. It's a developed solo. It has a first part, a middle part, and an ending part, and and a return part. A part that's good enough to hear it again. Like it's it's just a yeah. it's kiss. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> that run, man. That descending run, like all day. Like that's that's peak kiss solos right there. Yeah. Yeah, well, the, and, the, and the vocal ad lib at the end, love God, you know, just, just fuck, he just nails that shit at the end. He's killing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and I'll, I'll uh, go with that one too. I'll, I'll also go love gun. For me, it's a little bit closer, I think, than uh, than it is for Chris and and DK. But um, I will also go love gun. I'm gonna go love gun as well. Oh, all right, so a clean sweep hey, hey, again for love gun. Fun. And you got to remember, it's that first, it's that first uh, the, another great intro by Paul. It's just hysterical. Squeeze. Oh, God. Oh, God. And yeah. Off. Yeah. And, and the, his voice right there, with the, you know, that's like when he uses that in songs, when he's singing in that voice, God, if I could can that and just sing that way all the time, like I've been trying to my whole life, <clears throat> kind of a thing, right? Yeah. Yeah. All right. You know. Oh, you got it there perfectly. Uh, practicing for, for a right. year. Uh, Love, Love Gun was one of my favorites when I was a kid. I, I'm bored of it. You know, I think uh, it's it's played out, but yeah, I, I Love Gun for sure. So I'm All sorry, right, next. What, was, what was the song on Alive that we just like On Alive was Firehouse. Okay. Firehouse. <laughs> like threw it yeah. away. Yeah, it was, yeah we didn't fire, even talk firehouse about Firehouse. Firehouse is pretty cool. It's classic, of course. Yeah. And you it, gotta have cool. Firehouse after Hotter Than Hell. That's the yeah, one they, they, again. Yeah, they so. bleed together, yeah. But since uh, we're doing it this way, uh, yeah, Love Gun kind of seems to shine. Well, okay. and also Firehouse, you know, what you don't have is the visual at the end of Gene doing the fire. You hear it, you hear what the band's doing, but you don't get 
like why I remember hearing the kid going, What is going on here? It's just one la 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 Firehouse Firehouse Woo Firehouse Woo Notice notice it's the same voice that he does that little vocal outro on Firehouse that he intros love love gun with. It's the same That's that's Paul Stanley's uh stage voice. Who is that? Who played that? I don't know, man. I think that was DK. That, that was kiss, nice. That was nice. Kiss gnomes. Played it. All right. Uh, okay, next, number six. We're up to number six. Uh, nothing to lose. This is kind of an interesting one. Nothing to lose versus calling Dr. Love. Uh, rock and roll pneumonia. I know uh, you, you uh, what does he say? Uh, everybody's hot. Everybody's got rock and roll pneumonia. So let's call out Dr. Love. This is, I think, so far for me. I'll go first. This, this is maybe the hardest one so far because uh, "Calling Doctor Love" is one of my top Kiss songs, going way back when I was a kid. Um, "Nothing to Lose" is one for for me, the one that increases the most from from studio to to live. The studio album, the studio version, is not great. That great. I love, fucking love the live version of that, which is what makes this hard for me. Um, and the live version of Calling Dr. Love is great, too. Ooh, this is, a, this is the toughest one so far. Um, I, I'll come back to that. Uh, give, me, give me a few seconds oh. to think about it. So, so I, I will give an answer, but let me marinate it a little bit. Who wants to, who wants to go first? I kind of back that. That's, this is like, I know they're all hard. That's the joke. But like this one is like both songs, like they're pretty like equal tiered songs. They're both pretty fucking essential. Mm. Totally different songs, too. Yeah, yeah. and Peter's voice, you know, this is the first time uh, Peter Chris has really been brought into the conversation. His uh his vocals to me, it's to me that's more of a Peter song than a Gene song. The uh uh you know, during the choruses, you got nothing to lose. <laughs> Sing it one time for Peter. Yeah. Uh I I'm still I'm still letting it uh marinate. Okay, so uh who who was that? Who just Oh yeah, D DK, you didn't choose, did you? No, I it's, that's uh I mean, it's a he's, it's a toss up. He's struggling. Hit me, <sighs> Doctor Love, I guess. <laughs> do, 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 do. Like the like the augmented like p slightly picked version of that riff is like that, and even like the just chunk chunk between the two notes, dun, chunk, chunk, dun, like it's just I don't know. That's a pretty fucking iconic like guitar yeah. song. Even the solo, it's like it's different. The phaser and the fucking bends. You get the, it's like the first real big elephant fucking bend as Gene calls him on the record. It's, it's cool. It's just, yeah, that's tough though, man. Peter's vocal in the chorus on Nothing to Lose is like, you know. Yeah, he be yeah that, so Peter, Peter owns that song. That, that's his song. He sounds so good right there, man. Yeah. Um, can uh, Jason like or Chris, can, can you make a, a more uh, distinct? Is it, is it easier for one of you guys? Nothing to Lose to Calling Dr. Love? No, I th I think that I think that there's some comedy going on, uh, as sort of like lighthearted as uh, nothing to lose is, because you know it's kind of it's kind of got the Beatles, yeah, uh, you know what I mean. It kind of has this sort of like very you know right, and then Ringo uh, comes chorus. Yeah, straight kind of yeah, kind of white boy bounce, you know. Hey. But then the Peter, lyrical content. Peter is just like ripping. Yeah, you know, he's just like ripping <laughs> and playing drums and just, his voice sounds on fire. I fucking love that. And I'll, I fell I in love with sound. it. Uh, but I got to say, the co I enjoy the comedy of Dr. Love, uh, the harmony vocals. You know, they call me and then you got Dr. Dr. Love. love. <laughs> Just, right, right. They just sound right. drunk all of a sudden. You know, it's something. There's some comedy there that I really like, and that's really the first time listening to a live. I recall, and then later on realizing it's like, is that Yoda or Grover or the Cookie <laughs> Monster singing instead of Gene Simmons? And it kind of made me go something is different about his voice on kiss alive throughout the record and those first three kiss records something changed you know after the the second batch if you will uh you know uh 
Destroyer and Rock and Roll Over and Love Gun. Gene's voice, I, he became a better singer, better oh, control. Yeah. I don't, I don't really know, but on the live record, he's coming out with this kind of, oh, you know, kind of glottal, like, you know, soft palate, kind of like Grover voice. And that adds to the comedy, but I love calling Dr. Love on the studio. I'm going to go with nothing to lose because I think it's just so fucking dirty. Even though it's very, you know, hey, you know, Dick, um, Clark, Dick Clark Five kind of, you know, the association kind of. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Um, I'd have to say, I mean, you're right on the comedy because um, Gene came up with Dr. Love from the calling Dr. Howard, Dr. Fine, Dr. Howard from the Stooges. Wow. Yeah. Direct quote. Um, and I, that was a single. So I heard it that I remember hearing it on the radio. So you hear that cowbell, you know, and just like, oh, kiss on the radio. Cool. Um, which was rare. Um, and I love his vocal live. But the way they're singing on um, Nothing to Lose, because first of all, I, I didn't catch who said it, but the, the subject matter on, on, on that one is, a, that's OK. All right. What are we getting at here, Gene? And you got Gene singing the verses. And then Gene and Paul come in, and then Peter does the chorus, which is like, all of them doing Let Me Know, right? It's yeah. both, then they just shred, and Peter's ad-libs on the live record, you got nothing, he's killing it. Yes. All the, all the other live versions, he just, he opened up on that tune every time. And it's like, wow. You know, I always give Peter shit for being a drummer that's kind of like, eh, just getting by. But his singing was always fantastic. Yeah. Always. And he kills that one. So yeah. I'm going with that one. I'm going with the. No. Became, yeah, I think I will. I think I will too. Uh, based on on what uh, Chris and Jason said, uh, that that um, if it had been the studio versions, it would be calling Doctor Love for me for sure. But uh, live, that that that's such a, a unique song. Everybody is is in on that one, so I'll go nothing to lose. Um, identity song too like re like reunion when they pull up for unplugged like what's the go-to for peter it's like oh yeah it's, it's like holy shit the original drummers you're like what's he gonna do he's gonna sing the fucking chorus and nothing to lose it's like it's it's totally it's more it's that's a, that's peter a big, the baby driver somehow like it's yeah, so yeah that's a bit that's a great point yep he sang um, it on I, on the unplugged once more to give peter some love the the idea the last one when he starts the 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 fade out roll, you know, and he's he his voice becomes fucking unhinged, right? Yeah. At yeah. the end. No, he's just like. Oh, oh even yeah. before that, yeah, yeah. It's like a lion roar. Shake it, shake it, shake it. And, yeah. and then yeah, after the shake it, shake it, shake it, in the whatever that's going, that's like raining bullets. That's like fucking. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah. what the so. And that great uh, nonsensical ad lib, shake your, huh, huh. <laughs> shake the what? Okay, all right. But you're right. Now, he's like, you really, really got nothing. He's kind of being like, I don't you know. You really, like, really got nothing. Kind of and, and now he's Sinatra. Yeah. Yeah. James Sounds kind of crooning. Yeah, he's crooning yeah, a little yeah, bit. Exactly. He's, he does it all in that song. That's uh, maybe an overlooked pe people. Maybe I know people shit on Peter Chris for some things, including me sometimes. But uh, he, he, he. He rules that song. Yeah, it's the cat man. It's yeah. Cat. <laughs> um, all right, next one. Now, uh, I'll, I'll do this one because it's this is probably so far the easiest one for me. Um, come on and love me versus Christine 16. Christine 16 is my, what I uh, cite more often than anything else is my favorite Kiss song ever out of all of them, Christine 16. And I love the live version too. So, for me, Christine 16, faux show. Oh, that was easy for you. Very easy. To Wild. go to go pedophilia over. <laughs> over oh, a time to change. I don't even wanna... consider that. I just like it. No, people's people's perception right. of that song has changed, I'm sure. Well, and also, you got to yeah. remember, that, you know, they're thinking being a 50s rock and roll band at that point, because they also did that, um, uh, not the Shirelles. Um, then she uh, kissed me. Brunette. Yeah, then she then yeah, then she kissed me. I mean, that's a Phil that's a Phil Spector song. So maybe they're thinking Christine sixteen is the, the you know the the partner song for that. But yeah, I remember hearing that one on the radio as a kid too, and just kind of going, why is this old guy kind of looking in the you know in the schoolyard one day? And I just kind of hmm. even then we were a little skeezy on that. I one. knew, 
I knew I've got to have you. I've got to have you. I saw you coming out of the school that day. Are you fucking <laughs> kidding me? <laughs> right, right. Yeah, it's like it's like we just went from somehow the two horniest songs, like dude, like calling Doctor Love and Nothing to Lose, like super horny, and then this one's like, wait, what? <laughs> yeah, it goes super Bundy. Yeah, I don't yeah. know. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really funny. Hua, hua. Give me, give me some choice here. Come on and love me, Christine. Sixteen. Oh, come on and love me by a mile. Yeah, okay. me too. Yeah, I mean, Paul does the song. and Chris. Okay, which is cool. I'll, you know? I'll go with "Come on and love me," um, but I have to. Another say... great intro by Paul. Yeah, yeah. just do, come on and love me. <laughs> once, just like once, all right, love gun. Once, once again, it's the Paul and the C sharp thing. Again. Yeah. yeah. Tuning. I, I love. That. Yeah, I love that. I fucking love that. And the that. twin vocal. The twin vocal is yeah. killer in the bridge. Yeah. Yes. And then some yeah, ad libs are in there too. Oh, you know, he does a couple in there. Okay, Dan, what happened here, man? You're you're totally <laughs> like like that. And for me, this is I was like that too. I thought you were about to say, Come on and love me. It's like the coolest song. Wow. Uh I, I of course I love it. I love them all. I love Christine Sixteen. I, I was gonna I was gonna say something about uh, Christine Sixteen as it <clears throat> as it be a, a very very popular song, uh, probably even with with young girl young women in the seventies in the late seventies when the record came out. I don't think that they were thinking like that. They were like, "Hey, I'm sixteen. Nope. Hey, my name's Christine." And they weren't different even times. Thinking. Yeah, they yeah, weren't I'm thinking legal. about yeah. Their even their mom, if their mom was a rock and roll fan, hey, if you, hey, check these guys out, daughter, you know. And then all of a sudden, oh. it's like they're a Kiss fan. What are they supposed to have political? Oh, I don't like Kiss anymore because uh, it's kind of like because of the times have changed. Oh yeah, this song was uh, has been sampled many times by other popular Tone artists. Loke. Yeah, and I love that Tone Loke record because of that. His like obviously the the dude loves the rock. You know, he's, yeah. he likes AM Gold and he likes Van Halen, obviously. He knows, he knew what to do, or his DJ did. Whoever's cutting up wax, right, knew what right. to do. Um, but the idea that that even now Gene will still play it, because like Dan said, he doesn't give a fuck. Uh, I like that, because now he can make jokes about what it is and what it was, right? Right, Um yeah. But I think the song is very well put together. Um, when you think about the uh, the phrasing and the cadence, you know, uh, think about the riff, guys. You know what I mean? It's got this like chuggy pull, like, you know, it's got the backbeat that's yanking, you know what I mean? The time for the phrasing on it uh, comes in weird. When you go to the Alive version, the Kiss Alive 2 version, they don't have the piano. So mm -hmm. when in that when that comes in that that flip that timing flip yeah, doesn't the, doesn't yeah. feel the same as it does on the studio version. Yeah, right. And I'm not I'm not pointing it out to go like yeah fuck that song. I'm I'm pointing it out because it's interesting because they could have Peter could they could have just rolled up some you know Peter bang 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 because he's not really you know I don't know. Ace could have done this. Ace could have gone you know. Whoops, major. It'd be better if it isn't tuned, but yeah, ding, 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 ding. yeah, something, something could have, yeah. Anyway, it's just something that I wanted. And to and bring something up. that 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 came to me uh, as as you guys were were speaking was the uh, the the solo. I think everybody knows it was Eddie Van Halen's solo. Um, but that yeah, that reminds me. It's very melodic and uh, reminds me of uh, Detroit Rock City. That it's very hummable. Um, yeah. It's very simple, but it fits the song perfectly. Yeah. She's That's been it. around, but she's, but she's young and clean. clean. And it comes back into that. Ah, I fucking love Christine 16, man. Out of all the Kiss songs, that's number one for me. Next, moving on. Okay. Number eight, Parasite. And, oh, this is an interesting one. The first appearance by... Uh, Ace no. Freely, shock me versus Parasite. Both Ace songs, right? Both. Yeah. yeah, interesting. Oh, uh, Parasite, bro. Uh, 
I see you're making the you're making the right move, but like the the trap to fall into is to say shock me, it's Ace's thing, but like yeah, fuck parasites deadly. Yeah, again, multi vocal on it, they kill it. Yes, just all, yeah. all three of them here, they're killing it. Yeah, I'll go know, like, gang gang vocal from hell on parasite. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna go with oh. parasite. Yeah, there's a cool parasite story where. Uh, after uh, at reunion era, where uh, whenever they bring Parasite back, Paul tells Ace that he's playing the intro riff wrong because he was because Bruce it, it picks every note dun, 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 so much tighter, and Ace is like dun, 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 and Paul's like you're playing it wrong, and Ace is like I wrote the fucking riff, bro. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll say uh, something to that. I'll, I'll say Parasite. Um... And and as as DK said, I, I almost feel bad about it because it, it should be automatic that you go to Ace. But uh, for me, even when I was a kid, when I was six or seven years old, I don't know if I knew the term heavy at that time as related as it related to music. Um, right. But I I swear when I was that young, I remember thinking that that's heavy. Like to me, that was like holy shit. That that's like I love that sound. I think for me, that was one of the early songs that made me like heavy music. That that. Da -da 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 or as Ace would play it, na 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 na. It's a um, it Kiss is a gateway band. Oh, for sure. For for all of probably all of us and and so many of your peers they, and my friends. Well, that's also I, got the, the breakdown in the in the live version. That was just killer too, because they extended it. Oh my that. god! Yeah. That, 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 oh yeah. That's, well, that's, a, that's, that's why it was such a quick knee jerk, you know, reaction. But the, I oh, love so how. Good. I love how Dan. I like how you were saying, uh, um, and I mean Delaney this time. Earlier, I've been meaning uh, DK uh, about the shock me. You know, the intro to Ace. Finally, he's going to sing a song, and it's like, ta-da! Please welcome Ace. For you know, finally, Ace gets on two feet. Here he is. Yeah, yeah, he's standing upright, kind of. Uh, he's gonna sing a song too. What? He made he's it. Got, he's got a brain cell today. You know, uh, that <clears throat> that's great. And you know what? It's it's pretty cool. He sounds pretty cool on the record it, on the live. Yeah. You know, it sounds pretty cool. I think the Good studio there. version is studio version is a little tighter, probably. Yeah, yeah. But I the live it. version has the solo. We got to bring up. It has the solo. Mm -hmm. It's got all of that stuff in it. That yeah. the studio doesn't have and i'm still going with parasite just because of the brutality yeah all the way the, around it has the soul of it changed all of our lives let's be real like it's just it's just like that's why i i take i take parasite but i feel bad about it because like yeah shock me too you're, shock you're, me is everything you know like that yeah. that live solo there's a reason why they got fucking someone else playing that solo still note for note like it's it's kept for a yeah, reason it's yeah. so iconic heart a lot of heart in your in this discussion about these two songs uh giving a lot of love to shock me for sure mick can you can you make it a clean sweep for parasite or are you dissenting no no i will go with parasite um okay. because um it just they're kind of singing with the riff which is they're, they're kind of not but they are um the groove is cooler it's just so heavy um i mean the solo is cool in shock me but it kind of like takes away from the fact that it was a song it's now a live piece um and i always like the drum intro because it's so weird and jazzy boom, 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 boom. okay <laughs> that's it's not peter is it i don't know that's i've always point. i've never heard that it's not I don't. Yeah, know. I, I've never heard any uh, any rumors about that. I, not about I Love Gun. Anti, I thought it was Anton Fig. I don't know if Anton came in that early. I think. Yeah, Anton, I don't think. I don't know if he was around that early. Well, there's one thing on the on the studio version. Of course, it's Peter Live, but the, the studio version. Have you ever noticed that? Yes, the boom, the good, that boom, the good, that boom, 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 the hi hat changes from double time to half time before the first measure. Oh. Ah, uh, there's also speaking of which, nerd there's two alert. Other, there's I got some love gun nerd alerts. Um, the, the story I heard was that's not Peter playing the bass drum on Love Gun because he couldn't do it. That is Joe X Dube from Stars. He came in and wow, he all he played was the right foot. 
And then on wow. Love, if you listen carefully, um, you hear an overdubbed drum fill um, uh, on, I think, the second verse. Um, what's has it? A second verse start. You know, um, love you can't and baby, if you do what? Uh, are you no, talking no, about no, Parasite no, or no, Shock? No, this is back to Love. Gun. Oh, back um, to Love Gun. Oh. And it's just, it's totally overdub. You totally hear it, but listen on headphones. That, but it's in the second half of Love Gun. Can't miss it during the verse. Mm. But okay. back to your question. Interesting. Parasite. All right. Uh, the next one I predict will be an easy one, probably for all of us. She versus Hard Luck Woman. You know that girl. She. <laughs> Oh, DK, she easy she for me. Yeah, me too. Me too. It's, it's pretty obvious, and I I do love I I I like uh, I think Hard Luck Woman is great song, a great Peter Chris song. His songs tend to be my least favorite on their respective albums. Uh, Hard Luck Woman is uh, I love it, but no, she for sure. An easy acoustic guitars. Yeah, the yeah. Studi studio version is like am gold this yeah. is oh, one where the studio version is better than the live version AM you're right gold. yeah absolutely. A, absolutely yeah it's it's one of those 70s tracks that you could put on a playlist with james taylor or some shit yeah i guess he wanted to sing a, a rod rod uh, stewart song so that's a paul yeah Rupert. yeah yep. paul Ru yeah yeah that's true uh bass uh, again too it's like total total like perf like the guitar on she is just uh oh yeah beyond, like, again like beyond definitive for like what ace freely and the mark and he left on people who want to play les paul's for the rest of their life like it's pretty yep. fucking da, da. she is da, one, of those, one of those songs just like uh you know going blind or or strange ways it's fucking just heavy as mud you know it's like uh, the solo too it's the it's the door solo that ace used five and the one and Mike and yeah. Mike McCready uses it in Pearl Live. Jam. Yep, yep. And, yeah. and everyone else uses it too. They're just not yeah. as famous. Yeah, it's just Correct. it's the recycled lick. It's for everyone. It's yep. it's a creative common for musicians. Uh, anyway. uh, uh, Glenn Tipton used it on a Priest song. I can't recall what song. A hundred percent, I believe that's total. Do 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 do. Yeah. Yeah. And and one of the things I love about she is the uh, and I feel uh, sheepish talking about this with with you musicians. And I don't know what it's called, but I know you guys I all know what I'm talking about is that Gene, he does in a lot of the, especially on Alive more than the first batch of albums than the second batch. The, 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 the slides. Yeah. Yeah. Is it just a slide? Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, she is the best example of those. That song is full of them and the, the biggest, Deuce. best ones. Uh, you, you could find them all over Alive, but uh, most of all in, uh, in She. Yep. Um, Is, are, go ahead, uh, Chris. Uh, yeah, easy one here. Uh, we, we we covered the uh, the Peter tune, no problem there. Better studio version. Jason can um, uh, attest to this. When we did Cold Gin, the bass part and she with a breakdown. Doom, ba -boom, ba -da -boom, boom. Jamie used to call that the first big yell of the night. When I'd come up to the front and then just do the dun, 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 and the place would go fucking batshit. And yep. you just go, okay, they know what they're doing, you know. Um, so right. I I just loved playing that one because the, the riff is cool. I like the Wicked Lester version with the horns. Um, uh, I like know. it too. I, I don't know if I like it better, but I like it a lot. I, I like it. We, yeah, it's cool. I mean, you can see how they got it. You know, it's like, well, I can just see that discussion too. You know, we can use she, right? No way. There's no way we're doing that one. It's not going to work, you know, but somebody went out on that one and uh yeah just the whole the beginning um it seems like the crowd is like waiting for that next note on the down down perfect beginning perfect yeah uh, uh next up i think this i i'm just looking at these it seems that i think we're going to start to lean all of us maybe towards the live just a prediction Next one is uh, watching you kill a riff, and tomorrow and tonight. For me, it's I. Um, I know a lot of people don't like tomorrow and tonight. I like it a lot, but watching you is is uh, 
top top level stuff for me watching you yeah that's another one that's just it's just better live so i'm watching you is an easy one for me tomorrow yep. tonight yeah that's like you know, they've got that taste of like having a hit so they're definitely trying to write one right um, by the way back to uh christine 16 for a second and the van halen version um that i think they did that session and i think they came home and having listened to that tune um, the impression I got was they came up with the middle section. She's been around, but she's young and clean. I mean, where do those, those chords do, do not belong in a Kiss song, right? So apparently they took what they liked out of that one and they wrote, they wrote Jamie's Crying. Mm. Oh, wow. I'm not sure if I've heard that. It's believable. Yeah, really? oh, the, the timeline fits everything. everything yeah, it does. Fits and in he, there. Right. Wow, that's, that's, a, that's right. amazing. My mind is kind of blown right now yeah yeah i know i know wow but it's yeah it's like same kind of feel but the, the chord changes are definitely kids who study classical piano as opposed to rolling stones well there's there's some like there's some uh sort of uh magic if you will going on here because those those are the two songs that uh tone Loke sampled ah good point. oh yeah wait well yeah hey no kidding good one nice nice work nice work sir that's, that's too much i'm out that's crazy dude <laughs> okay yeah uh, uh we'll, we'll go we'll go to dk watching you tomorrow and tonight yeah w watching you it's a unique yeah. song it's like kind of the only song that sounds like that in the whole discography that's it's dark I, it's I'm a dark all song about, all about watching you yeah but, they, they and the way they turn the riff around too, like they like they do like a black dog thing that boom, ba da ba ba da ba ba da ba 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 da ba ba ba. Ah, you're right. Just slower. It's just kind of like, whoa, 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 where are you going? And they turn it around. It's killer. Dizzy. It's a dizzy riff. It's like very, very, very interesting. Yeah. They didn't play though. Apparently, Peter had a hard time with that song. Those shots in the beginning. He's always fucking them up. Yeah, it's shit like that. <laughs> Great song though. Did wait? Didn't you just sing she parts of she? Wasn't that Chris? Wasn't yeah, that, that's that was. Yeah. Oh yeah. What, what, what was yeah. I going to watch you? I got a watching you on. Yeah. Watching you. Yeah. Watching you back Limping as you do. I'm watching you. Oh, I mean, it's almost the same damn group. Yeah, and it's in G. That's uh, that's three. The last three songs, all four, we've all agreed that uh, all four have gone to a live. We'll see if that continues with this one. Oh, now, no, this one might be. This one might divide some <laughs> of us. This this is a tough one, I think. Hundred thousand years, I stole your love. Oh, yeah, that's a hard one. The last few have been pretty easy. That's a tough one. Hundred thousand years. Dan, why you do this love. to me? <laughs> it's got to be done. Danny, why you do this to me? <laughs> uh, I, can, I'm, I can't. It's a tie again. Yeah. Okay. I'm a tie on this one. This is the only one I think I'll call a tie on. Because well, I saw you love great opener. Again, great guitar solo in this beginning by Paul. Killer ad libs, right? All um, right. Weirdly, on the, th uh, the beginning of the side three, where it was the opener of that tour um, that they did it on. Uh, so it's edited. Um, and but a uh, hundred thousand years, I remember putting that on, and again, you don't have the visuals, so you don't really know what's going on. So, if you right, all I know is bam, bam, ba -dum, ba -dum, ba -dum. I don't know, there's flame towers going off. I'm just like, this just sounds bad. Ass. And, uh, what are they doing? and then the flange on Peter's drum solo, I was like, this is unbelievable. What am I hearing, you know? And, um, and the ace with the, the toggle switch on the guitar. And, you know, and I didn't know Paul had taken his guitar off and work. It was, you know, front manning the crowd. I had none, I, none, zip zero. Okay, can we all uh, take a break for a second and agree? Let's all sing the solo together. Okay, stop for a second. He didn't even change. That's one note. But again, it's it's One like we talked about song. earlier with Christine Sixteen that's, and, and that's uh, Detroit Ang Rock City. That's why I love Angus Young and shit. They can take one note and play it all night long, and everyone's just going, "Whoa!" So simple. Yep. yep. That's uh, 
that solo, like the live version with the extended solo and, uh, you know, just the, the way it's played and the tempo it's played at, it's for me like one of the coolest moments on on the record i think the drum as you're saying like you have no visuals like why why did they keep those long extended parts on the album i always kind of right, wondered right uh, right like, like the intro you the don't know jesus and blood if you've never seen them you it's just brrr. hell yeah brrr. i don't know it, like here's my little tidbit i know it's like modern kiss but check this out like i am i don't know tommy so obviously i'm just like ace till death kind of guy and for me like when i go when i when i go watch the show now i'm just kind of like hey, you know it's, i'm always like it's just tommy doing ace is tommy doing ace the most recent tour i went to i was really close it's right on in front of tommy's side and the way he played hundred thousand years like for me it was finally like I was like, yeah, man, like, motherfucker, like, earned his Kiss Army badge. Like, like he just played that. I know he can play better than Ace now. We all know that. But, like, he just played it, like, peak Ace freely. Like, every inflection, every bend, every every nuance about it. And that's a long-ass solo. It's the longest, hardest solo of the night on the set list. And it's, like, just, it's, like, that's a, if you can play that, you can play any Ace. Like, that's the, that's, the vibe is there, the feel's there, the heart is there. Um, okay. That, all being said, I think I might be the guy who says, I take, I stole your love. Ah, all right. It's so good. I mean, it's, oh, God, that song is so good. It, it really yeah. is. Um, and it's great guitar solos. His, you know, his, um, um, his ad libs are just killer in I Stole Your Love, but oh my God, you know, just, just you know, you get Paul, Paul and Ace leads. It's great. Yeah. Right. Which I, again, I didn't know. I had to, you know, see it something later. I think on exposed or whatever. I was like, oh hey, <laughs> that's Paul in the beginning. Yeah. You know? And speaking of the ad libs uh, that Chris mentioned, I think you're talking about the the best one. I remember my friend and I always loved this in in the live version. Um, I guess it's at the end of the uh, the second verse into the 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 second chorus. How does it feel? Ah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's killer stuff. How does it feel? Uh, I'll I'll go with. Um, I know Jason and Chris haven't given a definitive answer, but I, I have reached a conclusion. I will say 100,000 years just because that, uh, and you know, people typically don't like drum souls. That's when people go out for beer or sit down or whatever. Um, I was six years old when I heard this and I loved it and I still love it now. I never skip over that when I listen to it. Um, yeah, but just, yeah. just the song itself too, the, the, that, you know, subtle bass intro, da doom and then it gallops yeah and man i still love it's really really hard for me to go against that one but one hundred thousand years is uh is my choice for here he says bitch he says bitch <laughs> yeah it must have been a bit must have been a bit so i was gone when i was a kid that was a big deal he um yeah. also in that one that's a rip off of a budgie tune called rocking chair check that oh, one out that one too cool. and in the, in the game of rock forensics check that one out I heard that uh, watching you uh, was influenced. Paul, they had. Um, I don't really know. They had. Uh, uh, what to do? Uh, it's a band that I like that just flew out of my brain. One of the opening bands they had in the 70s all the time. Oh, Humble Pie. He uh, he kind of like watching you that boom, da 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 bam. Like they had some kind of riff that was a little sassy and boogie like that and he kind of yeah i can believe that yeah, yeah. Humble they pie. All love, everybody loves steve marriott in those days yeah everybody loves steve marriott yeah. still still waiting for uh for decisions from from the two mix i'm going i'm going with a hundred thousand years and here's okay. here's why um hundred thousand years uh it's another showcase of of bass you know even if it just be the but badu, right but it has the drum solo in it, uh, which changed a lot of people. So many people that I've interviewed or, or had on my show or just KISS fans I know. And you guys, I know you're going to agree once I uh, can get this out of my head. That drum solo influenced our favorite drummers. Oh, absolutely. Dude. Yeah. yeah. That, like like Do Dave Lombardo says, you know, oh, when I heard that, I wanted to play drum. I wanted to play rock drums. And then I just learned the solo note for note for note. And then I played it like 20 times faster. And it was my go to until I just had my own name. 
you know, until I knew who I was going to be as a drummer. That was a go-to all the time. You know, he says the same thing. I learned Judas Priest songs and then just played those 20 times faster, too. Um, and that was kind of a thing. And it was, a whole, you know, until he heard, you know, DRI or something, you know. <laughs> but at the same time, that, because of that, I think there's a lot of merit to the drum solo. Uh, and, again, how, like, uh, uh, memorable the parts are. Yes. Yeah. Very, very catchy drum solo. Yeah. Yeah. Good point. Catchy I mean, drum solo. I used solo. to walk around going. The snares. Yeah. Oh, the cowbell. He does both. He does snare and then he does cowbell. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm going with hundred thousand years for all, all of those. Okay. Uh, and Chris, one from you. Give me a, give me a choice. I'm going with that one too, uh, mainly because um, when I saw them do it, when I saw it on video, it became something else. I liked it as far as audio was, but it became completely a new deal when I saw Stanley take off the guitar and run up front and then the flame towers and Ace by himself and Gene doing the blood in the beginning. I was like, this is like their whole show in one song. Um, whereas like, I saw your love. I. I prefer the long version that they open up the uh, the 77 tour with it, you know, where they come down the stairs and it's a double intro and all that stuff. People, I think I'm exposed to see someone whip a glow stick just past, just zings past Paul. Uh, I was like, this is just fucking, that is just live energy killer. Just, you know, and like you said, how do you feel in your tip? How does it feel? You know, yeah. you know, and again, the echo's quite not on, but it's killer. But 100,000 years, buy a nose. Okay. Uh, the next one is going to be the easiest one so far. I would be very surprised if if there's any uh, dissension here. Black Diamond versus Beth. Silence. Both I, I... Peter. Both Peter. Oh, both good Peter. point. Yeah. Peter. Thing. Peter. Yeah, yeah. Ah, ace, I never even made that ace, connection. The Ace pair and now the Peter pair. Yep. Yeah, we had Parasite and Shock Me. I'm going to go... Um, Did I just put all Black Diamond for all four? Yeah, yeah. I mean, for me, for sure, yeah. I mean, um, two stories about that one. One, back to Rock Forensics. Compare this one to Grand Funk's Heartbreaker. Let me write that one, too. Mm -hmm. Black Diamond? Yep. Damn, there's a Black Diamond. It's lifted. I always thought that was such well, a... Well, the beginning is zero to heaven, you know, so yeah, that's where they got that. But, but yeah, listen to, listen to Heartbreaker, especially the end of Heartbreaker. Uh, it's in B instead of A minor, so, you know, no capo. Well, I guess you could have a capo. Um, and then um, when that first night when they came and saw us, we were doing, we did obviously Black Diamond, and Gene, Gene goes, who had the high part in Black Diamond? And I said, um, what do you mean? And he goes, the high part in the chorus. I said, me? He goes, couldn't hear it. <laughs> Thanks. I'll be over here. You turned on the Gene really well. Dressed <laughs> Down. Dressed Down by Gene Simmons. Totally 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 but he was he was just he was just fucking always a riot he was fucking hilarious like i remember sitting next to him there's a shot of me him and i that was in metal edge and we're sitting there and i'm in the makeup and he's not and he starts laughing at me and i, and I turned to him i go what are you laughing at you thought of this and he said i've never sat next to it I, this is just so bizarre this is fantastic he, so he would have those moments where it was literally it was you and him and then there was other moments where it was, he was Gene Simmons. Like, I'm Gene Simmons right now. You, and if you didn't know the difference between those two, you could get really mad at him. <laughs> you like, turned it on. Oh, oh, and off like that. Yeah, absolutely. But yeah, check out Heartbreaker by Grand Funk. I've got a, I'm making a list here of all the ones that you've got here. Uh, all right, the next one, uh, we got four more. Uh, this, one, this one might be tough. Rock Bottom. Oh, yeah. That's Paul's intro to, to Rock Bottom. Oh, yeah. yeah. Rock Bottom and God of Thunder. Oh. oh. That's actually an easy one for me. <sighs> Studio version of God of Thunder is a little boring to me. Like, for me, it's a it's a live song for sure. Like, if oh, I'm the allowed. Drum for sure. Yeah. Uh, um, I don't know. Rock Bottom so good. Especially that live version of Rock Bottom also slays the studio version. Yeah. That totally. live. That yeah, that live with the, it's got the longer, it's longer, longer, longer solo. 
Yeah, that solo, though. What he adds to that solo is better than the original solo. It's fucking awesome. Yeah, yeah they go twice around. Yeah, it's yep. great. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, and now it gets rough. Like, I like that yeah, shit. Yeah, on Unplugged, yeah. I, I quote that all the time. All the time, I, I quote, now it gets rough uh, when I'm listening to uh, to music and it goes from a software to hardware. I always say now. You might be bigger fans than me if you're quoting shit from stuff after 1982. <laughs> Like stage raps and things that are on VHS that, you know, it's like, I, I kind of, I hate, don't throw Did you rocks. fall off completely with the I, band? I kind of, I kind of did. Uh, you, you don't it, come back for revenge or nothing? Uh, you know, I heard some, I heard revenge. I think I own revenge and them as like a kind of a metal band, like were, was weird for me, even though huh. I'm a fucking metal head and they're the reason partially on that i'm a me fucking metalhead hearing them as it's like wait wait a minute man no you guys can you do more where's the androgyny here you know where's the thing that you where's the stuff that you created to 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 make it be what kiss is supposed to be right and it wasn't since it wasn't there anymore it was just hard for me but that's just me that doesn't mean that i i just completely disowned but i i like i like how you put it i just got in the back seat it's like i'm like okay go ahead you can drive the car now whatever the, the singer singer kulik like that that like 90s sound like because we can say that because it's really like the only good sure. record from the 90s yeah uh it's it's like if i can't have og4 like if i can't have my original glory era kiss like oh man i would love to see like a singer singer kulik style kiss again i love that yeah a, a that, lot of people fair. talk a lot of people talk shit about Kiss now for being a tribute band, but a lot of people love the the Revenge era, rightfully so. They're only one member off. All, all you know, it's it's one yeah. guy that's different. Not, but they're playing '70s Kiss. They're not playing '90s Kiss. Like the bands right, are yeah. different. Kiss was a band that like saw what was going on around them in that era. Like you know, they weren't selling they weren't selling out an arena three nights in a row anymore. They had to change the formula. They looked around, they're like, well, what is everyone else doing? Well, I don't know, they're putting more gain on their guitars and writing fucking grungier tunes. Let's give it a shot. And right. there's still some really, there's some 80 sounding sleazy songs on there, like with ridiculous lyrics and all sorts yeah. of fucking like cocaine swagger and shit. But there's also like a lot of like that, like grungy, like unholy is just like mean and like grungy and gritty, like killer song. Shit. Still yeah. has Dom, you know. Still has fucking cheesy shit like Domino, though. Ow. Yeah. I you like know. Do I like Domino. It's fun. Yeah. Domino, uh, Rock Forensics, Black and Blue, Nasty Nasty. Listen to that one. I had that album. I I had uh, Na Nasty Nasty and In Heat were the two Black and Blue albums I had. Yeah. Yeah. A Kiss of Death is a great tune. Um, so DK, what, where, who had the vote? Was it DK? Yeah. Oh yeah. So who was it? Was that? Uh, yeah. Where DK? Did you go Rock Bottom or uh, God of Thunder? Oh. I'll go rock bottom. I was rock bottom as well. Rock bottom is DK. uh and we're up against God of Thunder, right? Yeah. Live live Kiss Alive too. I have to point out there's some more comedy here, whether it was in, in uh intended or not. Um Gene's voice crack makes yes. it laugh. I am the Lord of the no, Wasteland. No, it's more like I, I. Yes. I. I. Yeah, just be clear. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Our, our that set. is that's pure gold comedy every time if i could just like drop the needle drop the needle pull it back pull it back oh, 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 you know uh yeah, it's yeah. fucking great the fact that's that they left it that gene said it was okay to leave it makes me go gene's not as tight as i thought he i i would go. think he, he he's he's go. more open i i think paul seems more uh controlly and more more um Aware of the output. Yeah, I think Gene Gene seems actually, you know, for, for some things, he seems kind of easygoing. Like he seems open to, uh, not for me, it seems like Gene doesn't need everything to be perfect as much as Paul would. Uh, but now go, yeah. going back here from my choice, I choose Rock Bottom. I was not a big God of Thunder fan. I know it's it's uh, a, a Gene's probably signature song. Um, and a lot of people would put it at the top of their list um i like it it was I, I think i don't like it as much as most people and i love rock bottom so for me uh, rock bottom is an easy one chris my turn um rock bottom for me is is the sentimental favorite because in one summer i went and saw my cousin out in J uh, new jersey and he introduced me to live 
Queen Sheer Heart Attack and Led Zeppelin IV in one song. Oh. Wow. All right. So one of his favorite things to do was sing rock bottom. We were out there at a pool. He would sing rock bottom, get on the inner tube, and just sing rock bottom. And it was hysterical. So this that's the sentimental side of me. And again, Paul's got some great you know ad libs in that one. And the guitar went up like comes on just before they start playing it. Um, I can. I mean, awesome. But God of Thunder is just got more guts than the the studio version, which I like a little. But like Jason likes to say, a little dirty. Um, the um, the drum solo can be edited out and the song still is okay. You know, it's another drum solo song by Peter and they, and they did edit it down. And he fucking freaked out about it. Yeah. Like, wow. Peter, it's already like five, six minutes in there. You know, no, we're not doing that. Um, I think Ace's solo on that one is great. Um, so it's got a thunder for me, but yeah, the, uh, the crack in the voice just makes that for me. That's and, my favorite part of that song. And Gene, he sounds so intense in that one. And, and yeah, his voice yep. cracks, but yeah. he, he, he sounds he, like he really means it. Yeah, we got a, I got a story for that one too. Kevin Valentine, who played drums on a couple of songs on Revenge. He was a long time friend of theirs. He, he opened for him at whatever band he was in on the Dynasty tour. He was our sound man in Cold Gin. He loved the, like, the way I did the crack. I mean, it just, he just absolutely like insisted I do it because you know, I did it once just to amuse myself. You know, I didn't always do it. And he was like, you have to do that every time it makes it for me. So I would exaggerate it more and more and more each time. And we were playing the celebrity. We got so big. We were playing the celebrity theater in Anaheim, right? Which is like 3000 seats or something, 2,500 seats. We sold it out. And um, Kevin used to, um, at the end of Black Diamond, he would take the kick drum and soak it in reverb. And that would be our explosion. So it'd be boosh. And the whole place just, you know, shaking the rafters. But at that particular show, we went to the end of, you know, God of Thunder, the dune, dune, dune. And I went, ah! and he just fell off on his chair behind the front of the house. That was that. He was down for the night. But yeah, that is absolutely my favorite part of the song. I right, love so sen sentimental reasons for, for yeah, Chris so choosing God, God of Thunder. Thunder. Yeah. Um, the next one, uh, for me, it, it's a little bit difficult. Just because I don't love either of these two songs, which might be surprising, but it's uh, Cold Gin versus I Want You. Hmm. You don't like either of those songs? No, 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 no. Hold on. To be clear, I love all these songs, but compared to the, the, the yeah, rest yeah. of them, um, I this is the, the thing that I don't like about the, the live version of I Want You is the I want. Yeah, the the you know the the call and answer in the crowd yeah. it goes on a little bit too long for me, um, so wet but I do snare. love it. Um, oh. And Cold Gin, I liked it when I was younger. As the years have gone by, for whatever reason, it, it's not among my favorite Kiss songs, but I do love it. Um, I, I I guess I'll choose Cold Gin. DK, you're you're uh, you're on a roll here. Go ahead. Yeah, man, like uh, Cold Gin, like that middle part's like one of the coolest Kiss things. Like, come on, it's like it's the shit. Um, I think that that part is like super standout. And for me, like, I want you as shit, man. I think that might be my favorite song off of Rock and Roll Over. All right, good like one. That, yeah, like that's uh, those are both for me. Those are like both top tier songs, and hmm. like. You know, cold gin. Like, like, it's like it's primitive. It's it's their primitive attempt at like proper songwriting. It's got parts to it, and they it's 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 very diverse and it's noty. And then like you kind of have the same thing. And I want you. It's like got a clean picked part. It's got you know vocally. There's a lot going on. It's got like a head that heavy. It's just cool. Fuck, dude. I don't know which one I'd pick of those two. That's one of the hardest ones for me yet. Hmm. Okay. Straight up. Yeah, it was it was harder for me too, just because I don't like them as much as the other ones. Go ahead, Shit. Chris. Uh, I'm gonna go with I, I like what DK said about making love, and I'd like the version. That's another one. I like the version on Rock and Roll Over better than the live version. And I think it makes yeah. it kind of feels like he rewrote that one for the solo record for Tonight You Belong to Me. Um, they, uh, they I feel, want you. Yeah, yeah, they feel yeah. very similar. Um, and I love Tonight You Tonight You Belong. I mean, just it's so dramatic, you know, Paul Stanley. <laughs> and, just, and then and then he wrote Tonight You Belong to Me to sure know something. That's right. Yeah, yeah that's right. Yeah. But um, but Cold Gin, um, again, sentimental, reason, sentimental reasons for that one. Um, it's just, like you said, the, that middle part 
you know, and the intro, you know, still to this day, I will call friends on the phone. I know <laughs> some people outside, you know, or anything. Someone, you know, orders a screwdriver. Vodka and orange juice. I mean, any chance I get, yeah, you know, I will. I will do the cold gin intro in there. I did. I did a little video of that uh, maybe last year. I'll, I'll try to remember to to send it to you when we when yeah, we wrap it up. Do. I I kind of recreated that, but I did coffee instead of cold gin. Uh, <laughs> so so what, what what are you doing, Chris? You're you're saying cold gin, right? Oh, um, no. DK no. wasn't sure, or did did you make a choice yet, DK? Or are you still brewing? Is that is that? I was talking to someone backstage. That's a lot. That's not a live, right? Of course. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. Fine. The, 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 the splitting hairs tiebreaker for me is going to be that the fucking vodka orange juice speech is on live. And those that, that stage banter is one of the many reasons I love Paul. That pushes it over the edge. I'll take cold gin. You know, speaking of that, when I, um, I was too young, far too young when I first heard this to know what vodka or tequila was. But as I got older, um, at some point, I remember it, it occurred to me. When, when it's getting so hot outside, you always need something to cool you yeah, off. Some off. people, like, who cools off with tequila? Or gin, for that matter. Or, or anything, really, I guess. Uh, who the fuck drinks vodka and orange juice, man? Back like, then, a lot of people did. That, that was so, the big, oh, yeah. big thing. It's so, oh, yeah. it's so dated, it's so funny. I was talking to someone backstage, you said there's a lot of you people that like to drink vodka and orange juice. I'm like, who the fuck were you talking to? Yeah, and well, that was another thing. That conversation never happened. That's that. Uh, that's. <laughs> Paul Stanley taking liberties. He he wasn't talking to anybody backstage. Of course not. And like as if somebody was talking. Hey, Paul, you know what? Either. Hey, no. Paul. You know what? A lot of these people out here in your audience tonight, they like to drink vodka and orange juice. Nobody told Paul Stanley that. Right. Yeah. Well, and, and I always found it ironic that this the song about alcohol, cold gin, is sung by the only guy who doesn't drink in the band. Yeah, of course. Yeah, like and written and written by Ace, who does. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. But yeah, that um, intro is just, you know, and tequila with the little the cowbell thing that Peter throws in. <laughs> nice. Yeah, it's you know? so good. It's shtick. So They're doing shtick. Yeah, yeah, I think that, I think that it's, it's, an, it's another tie for me. This one's going to be a tough one because of uh, Paul's intro. Um, of course, the song is one of my favorite songs by the band ever. Uh it's got all the cool parts. I've covered it a million fucking times like you guys probably have. Uh, but, you know, I want you is DK said something a little while ago about it's kind of it's a it's well written song and it's got riffs. It's got. I like the da 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 is what it is too and the funny thing is is that the intro and the reintro in the moment it's all sweet you know and everything and then it's like yeah. a tank rolled over your house you know yeah um and just guitars and, and bass on that yeah. Yeah. yeah and that's cool and you know what they gotta be shit tight to play you know it's, that's that's yeah. hard to just yep. play without you know unless there's someone keeping time back there and the, that's practice the uh yeah. the uh and then the other thing about i want you is that the ba -ba 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 baby ba -ba 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 baby i wow right all that shit on the end is hysterical and <laughs> ah, wow, 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 wow. Yeah, and all like the that. all the yodeling and shit uh yeah. it's 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 comedy just like the crack in god of thunder um uh, you guys know that when on that tour that they were uh, the, the where they had all the costumes and shit in like 95 or whatever when they it was led up to the unplugged show yeah, yeah. You know, the, the tour they did uh, where it was like a, a convention 95 yeah, yeah. yeah. I saw yeah. that tour in, uh, in Toronto DK knows the the, Hota, the Hilton on Queen Street that was where yeah, it was yeah, yeah. Uh, across across from City Hall I saw that tour it was a hundred bucks in 1995 Tommy got me and me and my singer from sick into that show 
and uh, you know everyone's sitting on the floor in a ballroom, and they're on mm-hmm. this like literally everyone's sitting on the carpet. There's no chairs. They're sitting yep. on the carpet and they're watching Kiss play acoustic on a on a bandstand this tall over in the corner, right? And they're doing I Want You, and they're handing the microphone around to people to sing, right? And then r- randomly, they're walking by, and they someone hands it to me, and I did that live outro for I Want You. <laughs> and it's on YouTube somewhere. Where is that, in Dallas? Yeah. Oh, and it's on out. YouTube somewhere. And... Uh, and Paul, after I after I did that, they they dotted the song, and Paul go, I know someone's getting laid tonight, yeah. <laughs> which I thought was pretty funny. <laughs> yeah, awesome. Love it. Yeah. And now, but you never gave you never gave an answer, Jason. Which is it? No, no I'm ties go- in this game. I, I'm cold going, gin. I'm I want. Going, I'm going with cold gin. Cold gin. But, okay. but I have to give credit to all of the enjoyment that I've had out of out of I Want You for all of those reasons and especially the cherry that I got to actually sing that outro in front yeah, of cool. Kiss and like go, yeah. I love you guys. I'm even going to, you know, because yeah, I kind of, I kind of, I kind of nailed it. The yodel. Oh, let, let me, let yodel, me tell a quick, yodel-y. sorry, a, a quick uh, no, unrelated to Kiss story. Last week here in my city, I live in Cuernavaca, Mexico, which is not a place that anybody knows about. Neil Turbin played here from Anthrax. I saw your, your unbelievable. Photos. Yeah. yeah, and um, and he was singing Metal Thrashing Mad, and I I've been into Anthrax just like Exciter since 1984, and I was up at the front as I always am, and I was singing along, and he saw me sing along, and he gave me the mic, and I sang a little bit of Metal Thrashing Mad. Nice. And it's fucking awesome when uh, when 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 somebody does that. I yeah, can the... can speak as as a fan. Jason knows, I guess yes. everybody knows, but uh, that that's really cool when you get a chance to do no, that. No, when you're yeah. when you're a fan and you're and the band lets you in, as I like to call it, you're in the club. That's a very very special special moment. Uh, yeah, the fans, they then you never forget that. That's a that's like a virtual picture album that it's a memory that's never going to go away. You remember the smell, uh, and uh, that's important to me. All of those little things is very important, but. I mean, I feel like Dan and Chris know me well enough to, to you know, to go, well, fuck yeah, Jason's like fanboy, you know. Uh, but, yeah, and I'm sure that, like, I mean, DK, I could interview you about being an exciter. What does that feel like? You were a fan and then boom, right? I could I could interview you about being in Dangerous Toys. How's that feel? Yeah, I, literally part of my job. We should book that sometime. Yeah. Yeah, I would I would love to hang out with you sometime. But the point the point is that right there. It's like what? How do you how do you feel about that? Being a I mean you're a fan, and then all of a sudden, boom! Well, hey, we need a guitar player. You want to do this shit? You know. Right, right, right. You, or yeah, uh, or then, yeah. you know, Jason, I'm sure he's gotten this too. Where then you meet somebody, and you let him in. And then you see the look okay. that's on their face that looks yeah. clearly on yours. And it's just unbelievable. You just yeah. go, holy shit, you know, it, it all, you know, circle of life type of stuff. Yeah. But yeah, it's, it, it's one of the weird occupations where you can hang out and be part of the game with those who um, inspired you. It's like, I, I always make the joke that you don't see a bunch of dentists getting together at a barbecue saying, hey, let's go do it, you know. Uh, a, a root canal on this guy in the garage. I got the gear, or whatever. But you could put four dis- disparate musicians in a garage together. Yeah. They'll find something to play. They yeah. will. And it's and it's and if it's one of your idols, and you're playing either a a song that you both love or one of theirs, your head explodes. You just right. go, I. This is like everything I was listening to when I was a kid. It's like it's right here, but I'm doing it with him. This is happening. Yeah. Holy yeah. shit! It does not get old yeah, ever. There's, ever, there's ever, a- ever. There's a love affair there, you know. There's something going on. It's a, it's a, it's distant, even though you're standing right there in front of the person. Yeah, it's mentor student. Yeah. It's all that. It's crazy. Yeah, yeah. That's a good way to say it too. Yeah. It's, it's, uh, it's really cool that this like side conversation would be like, as you said, like being let in comes up, comes you know during a conversation about Kiss because to varying degrees every single person in this room can like personally attest to Kiss being one of those cool bands that obviously yeah. you grow up with them on a pedestal but then at some point in your life you realize that the Kiss circle isn't that huge and you do get let in in some capacity and it's life altering like you know, like when I was 
in my early, like I lived with them my pedestal for a whole life and then things started happening. We played a Kiss cruise. All of a sudden I'm like on guest list of Kiss shows. Next thing I'm like hanging with these people on, on a people level and I'm like, hey, like tell 15 year old DK that this is happening right now. Like this is fucking insane. Right. Yeah. Like I'm losing my shit right now, but I can't lose my shit because I'm here. But how did I even get here? It's crazy. Imposter yeah. syndrome yep. almost when I when I'm around people of like, you know, I've lived with these people on a pedestal my whole life. Yeah, we're yep. dissecting their albums song by song. Like, right. you know, right. Right. Yeah. It, it, yeah. And like I said, it's I think maybe other than sports and maybe the movies, it's like this is one of the only ones that where that stuff can really happen. Um, yeah, when it right. does, you're just like, you just yeah, but nobody. Uh, Aaron Rodgers is not going to invite you onto the field to to throw the next pass. No, no he's not telling me to do a post pattern. Ain't happening. Yeah. No, he's not no. handing you the glove or the bat. Right? Yeah, yeah. That's that's a not, that's a music thing. Not wow. absolutely, and it's and like DK was saying, you just go, wow. Um, if I had been 15 years old, because I use that example too, and the, the woman at Conley's, which is where I bought Kiss Alive in Mount Vernon, Ohio, because it was a specially priced two album set. So I could afford it. And I went, if the woman would have come over and said, by the way, in 12 years, you're going to be playing Paul Stanley's birthday party. And Gene's going to pay you to do it. And he's going to sign a check with, you know, and give it to you. Yeah, sure. Right. Whatever, lady. Ride your head back to the you know, paint department. Keep on huffing. Because there's no way you are, you're out of your fucking mind, lady. No way. But wow. there it is. You know? That's crazy. Uh, all right, we're, we got we got sidetracked there, but uh, good stuff. Uh, and thanks everybody for the contributions. Good stuff. Oh, and I'm the king of sidetracking shit, so I apologize. You That's knew all right. Was, you knew it was going to happen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, yeah, we got two two more. Um, two more, and I I'm ad libbing the last one a little bit, which I'll explain when we get to it. the 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 penultimate one. R two uh, two big anthems here. We got rock and roll all night. Shout it out loud. This, this is a good one. These are both anthemic. Obviously, they uh, they were closing, well, at least the albums. Uh, well, Rock and Roll Night didn't close the album, but, uh, you know, everybody knows that. Oh, the show. Yeah, this is a good good comparison. Um, who, who wants to go first? Um, I hate you. I'll go. I'll go. I'm going to say um, Rock and Roll All Night, mainly because they have ended every show with Rock and Roll All Night since they put it in the set. They are You are not getting out of that building if you're in Kiss without playing that song. And that's where all the pyro goes up. That's where all the you know the, the Stanley dramatics come out and the Gene posturing and all that. That's that's the one. And I love "Shout It Out Loud" because again, that trade-off vocal, Ezra in production, the piano on the riff, the dun 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 dun. Just it's fucking fan great, great a solo, you know. Um, but e Ezra, Clyde, Ezra, you know, mm -hmm, once again, yeah. And it's just but rock and roll nights, rock and roll night. Just right. is. Everyone knows that one. If you play them two together, everyone's going to know Rock and Roll Night. They're not. Not everyone's yeah, going to know that. But also, such a cool intro. On on um, shout out. Loud. Uh, where are you talking about Paul's live intro? If you people want a little oh, bit of rock and roll, or or just the the musical oh, intro. <laughs> no, it's the two guitars and the bass. Do 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 do. Boom, 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 boom. Yeah, it's cool. It's really yep. cool. That's yeah, kind of sonic. Yep. And, and some great ad libs in that one, too. You know, especially as they, as they come back into it. And Gene just, you know, he's throwing all those yeah. in. I hear it get louder. Like they all, come on, everybody, shout it now. Like they all got their own little thing. It's fun. Yeah. Yeah. yeah Ace did that line in, uh, when he came back in 96. Ace did the, everybody shout it now. Everybody shout it now. He always put the thumb out. Yeah. Hey. Yep. Hey. Yep, yep. hey. Space man. Uh, oh, space man. It's me. DK, D DK yeah. you got the mic. Uh, oh. Rock and roll night. Shout out loud. Oh, rock, rock and roll all night, but like uh, interchangeable, anthemic, like, you know, tough one. Yep. But yeah, everything that was said, you, uh, Jason, you know, you just you, swaying me with the, with the stuff you're saying and the, the, yeah, it's just, yeah, for everything it is, rock and roll all night. Okay. Yeah, Jason? I'm, I'm, I'm concerned <laughs> uh, uh, as to why we thought this was a good idea. Ha. <laughs> uh, <laughs> because... This is this is it. Uh, well, because both of those songs are uh, have their purpose in the world of Kiss. 
when you think about the the lyrical content, just just the chorus. Just, let's just talk about the chorus and the party, uh, the party you're walking into. Yeah. Um, Hello. <laughs> That's a great ad. That's a good ad lib too. <laughs> Hello. Yep. yep. Wow. <laughs> kind of took me out, Chris. Uh, <laughs> Came off the top row, buddy. Sorry. Wow. Uh, I'm going to go rock and roll all night because it's the first thing that I that I fell in love with about. Uh, you know, I heard that first before, even though. I, I sound like I'm, I've got the same answer as you, right? That <laughs> Shout It Out Loud has all this, uh, you know, mind-blowing, the live version, right? And then, isn't it interesting that the live version of Rock and Roll All Night is the one that I hear in the grocery store? It's it's become the definitive version, yeah. Yeah, well, like, like they, the they, yeah they, the live version was the single, yeah, right? Yeah, they, yeah, shun, they shun that, the you know, the dress, to, what album is <laughs> Dress to Kill? They yeah. shun that version of it. They don't even like, the, you don't hear, you don't, have you heard that on the radio? They don't really focus on that. It's the live version. Yep. And this is on like, you know, pumped in, you know, digital radio. It's like. Yeah, Walgreens. Like, yeah, exactly. Um, so obviously it has put the point across, but shout it out loud is once again, some of the, I mean, Destroyer could be the peak record for the band. Oh, yeah. Uh, as far as songwriting goes, it has their only number one on it. And Gene and Paul are pissed that they didn't write it. Ah. Oh, uh, yeah. I do. Uh, that was actually co written with a guy that lived in Austin for a while, that uh, Doc Penridge, Stan. Penridge? Penridge yeah. yeah. And Penridge, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. He, but, he worked uh, mostly, mostly with Peter Chris, right? Stan Penridge. I think yep. they were friends, yeah. Yeah. Um, they might have been but, else together. I don't know. It might have been what? In Chelsea together. Oh, okay. Oh, his band, yeah. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah, you're uh, right. But I'm going with rock and roll all night because uh, I just think it's very definitive. Um, but even though Shout is a motherfucker. It is. And right. like both hearing, that and the studio version, they're both hearing, great. Hearing Gene play that. You know what I mean? Way up high like that mm -hmm. was really cool. Yeah. Uh, yep. Like he's adding to the harmony they're already playing, right? Yeah. Well, he's doing the piano part. Yeah, no, no. yeah he is. Where he is. is. is oh, yeah. I got it done again, but. Yep. Okay. Oh, hey. I'll, okay. I'll go with, uh, I'm going to go with Shout It Out Loud. I'll be the, the one, the different one here. Not because I'm burnt out of rock and roll all night, which I am. Uh, but I, I don't think I ever at any point, even when I was seven, eight, however many years old, I don't think I ever liked rock and roll all night as much as Shout It Out Loud. Uh, when I was a kid, Shout Out Loud was about as, as good as it got for me. I still get a really good feeling when I hear Shout It Out Loud much more than rock all night. That's an easy one for me. Shout out loud is fucking killer. Well, you know, if you don't feel good, there's a way you could. That's right. I, are you don't, telling me not to sit here broken hearted? Yeah. Just call all your friends. In the neighborhood? Hello. Oh. Hello. Hello. Oh, that's it. Uh, we, could, we could do a whole uh, routine oh, about we, that. Yeah, we'd annoy the shit out of a bar full of people right now if we were all sitting yeah. here. Yeah. So funny. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we might get killed. <laughs> Dude, they might just be like, "Oh my God, you nerds need to go." <laughs> yeah. yeah, this is this is like uh, I don't know if this is one notch above or one notch below Star Wars stuff. It's Ooh, the we're same doing here. shit, dude. It's yeah, same. probably a lot of the same people. Yeah. Uh, all good. right, last one. We got one last one. Now, this one I did uh, take uh, liberty with a little bit because uh, Alive has sixteen songs, and Alive Two. We're not we're not going to do the studio song songs from Alive Two. Um, now, Alive 2 only had 15 live songs, so what I've taken the liberty to do is, um, I, so it's, by the way, the, the, the live, the Alive version is, of course, Let Me Go Rock and Roll, and I put that against Take Me, which was, they did play that on the Alive 2 tour, did. and it was on the You Wanted the Best compilation, which they claimed was from Lost from the Alive 2 tour, which is bullshit. It was clearly recorded in 1995. 
Yeah. Nonetheless, um, so I don't know if, how many, how, if you guys are really familiar with that version, but let's say rock and roll. Uh, sorry, let me go rock and roll versus take me. It's better than Hooligan from that tour. Yeah, I, I also thought about Hooligan or uh, Do You Love Me, which they also did in that tour, but I, I, I chose take me. So let me go rock and roll, take me. Hit it. I'm going to go with take me. Hmm. Uh, let me go rock and roll is definitely filler. You know, it's them trying to be the Stones. Um, and it's, you know, kind of like, okay, and we're doing the same solo again, and here we go. It's, it's just for, you know, it's the end of the night, we're beat, let's play something easy, because we're fried, get it done, get out of here. Whereas the other one, there's, you know, some of the vocals are really hysterical, because they're trying to sing, take me, you know, it's kind of like, what are you doing? But they're just trying to get through it. But it delivers, the, the vibe is there, the attitude's there, um, and it doesn't feel like a fill-in to me. Whereas Let Me Go Rock and Roll felt like, like you know, oh, God, we're almost there, man. It's been an hour and a half in this shit. We are roasting alive. Let's just do a couple more songs in A and get out of here. You know, and they took uh, it off, but. I'll add something here. So, and I'll choose Take Me also, which I'll explain in a minute. But th that reminded me, Chris, what you said, uh, a little thing that I like about Take Me. And I know all three of you guys know what I'm talking about. I don't know if I'll explain myself properly. Take me, and then the, the little bass, doom, doom, any way you want to just take, you know, that everybody knows what I'm talking about, right? Yeah, yeah, doom, doom. Doom, doom, doom. yeah you like yeah. the slides and the trills from Gene, that's what it is. Yeah, like just those those little head. little licks, little tastes of things. I really like those things. Yeah. Um, but, ah, no, sorry, I'm going to take uh, Let Me Go Rock and Roll, and this was my reason. I didn't really like that song when I had this album when I was a kid. It might have even been my least favorite one, Let Me Go Rock and Roll. But um, as I said, with Got to Choose, sometimes you get influenced uh, or sometimes you just change your mind or your opinion over, over time. And um, I just didn't like it. Maybe it was, I think, because I liked rock and roll all night. And then to me, it was uh, another rock and roll song. Um, but over the last 10, 15 years, um, my wife, who I met in 2000 because of Kiss, if never, if not for Kiss, we never would have met, never would have got married, and I never would have lived in Mexico because she lives in Mexico, if DK doesn't know that. That's why I live here. Um, she's my ex-wife now, but we, we still do a lot of things together. That's one of her, maybe even her number one Kiss song, so she fucking loves it. So every time it comes on, she, she's singing it, and that has kind of, you know, made me think, oh, yeah, you know, seeing somebody else enjoy it, I think has made me enjoy it more. So maybe... X amount of years ago, I would have said Take Me because I, I love Take Me, always liked it. But I would say in more recent years, I'm, I'll go with uh, Let Me Go Rock and Roll. I'm going Take Me. Okay, Take Me for Jason. Have you guys seen the um, the vert live version? I think it's from Kobo of Gene singing uh, Let Me Go Rock and Roll where he gets it wrong. Sings the wrong lyrics. Yeah. He's yeah. singing, the, he's the, singing the lyrics to, yeah. 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 Just, rock and Roll all Night, he sings. Like yeah, completely. yeah, fucked yeah. it up. To my point of being fried out of your mind and the and the heat and stuff, it's just like, oh my god. There's, have you seen the one where Lemmy sings? They're playing Overkill, but he starts singing Ace of Spades. Yeah. Wow, well, that was when that was in uh, the very end. That's the end when, yeah, life. near the end for sure. Like, yeah, oh, and the band's looking at each other like Phil and uh, Nick. You're like, oh my god, how do we get out of this? You know, like holy shit. But like Gene is just kind of he's just kind of confused. Look. What, I think what Paul. Doing? I think Paul took over for a moment. <laughs> Is that what he did? Yeah, Paul just helped Paul, him out, bailed him out. Paul just walked up and like looked at him like you dumbass and started singing the right words. <laughs> See, you know what? Speaking of that, these are these are the kind of things that 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 you know these we kiss nerds know. That that kind of reminds me. There was a maybe it's also from Koba Hall. I think it was one of these ones that would rec that was recently uploaded by Sam Loomis. Yeah. Oh, or so nah, could, it might have might have been earlier because I remember it quite well. I don't know if that's because I've seen it recently that Sam Loomis put up or if it's an old one. Anyway, they were playing Strutter. I think also from Cobo Hall seventy five or seventy six, and um, Paul Knox accidentally, of course, knocks his mic stand over. I think just as they're going into the at the end of the first verse or into this first chorus, and um, Gene takes over and sings. Uh, Everybody yes. says she's looking good, and it's Gene singing that. I love that. I like those little. It, it's, it's it was cool hearing Gene take over for it was only two lines or something but it was cool so maybe yeah maybe paul did take over and uh let me go rock and roll when gene was singing rock and roll all night that's familiar yeah have you seen the footage where um paul gets stuck on it's recent you know within the last 10 years or so where he gets stuck on the way out to the second platform during love gun and gene has to sing it yeah i did see that yep no. yep yep i remember yeah. that 
and Gene doesn't know the words. I'm like, you've only heard this song since 1977 and you know none of them? I think he often doesn't know the words. We talked about this earlier. Gene, you mentioned it, Chris, that Gene, nope, don't know it. I can't do your Gene impression <laughs> like Jesus you. Christ, yeah, whatever. You can't do it. You, you, uh, you, I'm, I'm saving your ass again. I can't believe this. That's pretty good. Never Sorry. knew that you had that talent. All right, the, so we'll wrap it up here. DK, you're the, you're the last vote of the last song. Let me go rock and roll. Take me. I kind of hear everyone's criticisms about Let Me Go Rock and Roll. It's another rock and roll song. It's like a basic like Rolling Stones riff. But uh, on a guitar, for whatever reason, this song, maybe it's because there's so much wankery in it, but the on a guitar <laughs> level, it's always resonated with me. Um, so you're putting me in a tough place because uh, Let Me Go Rock and Roll is not a write-off song to me. It's got like some really just fun, wanky doodle leads like everywhere. Everywhere they could fit in the same riff augmented like an octave higher or slightly different with more leads on it, they do it. They like spare yeah. no frills on the song. I really love that about it. Just another dance move part. Like it's like the whole thing. However, Take Me has got to be in like my top 10 Kiss songs ever. When Diamonds, when we did... A kiss cruise there was like a all-star jam type thing where like every band that was playing gets to do a couple kiss songs and the guys from kiss like paul's gonna get up and sing i stole your love with someone and like gene's gonna like do whatever like you know there was it's like a special event and they're like you know here's the list of songs that are approved by kiss like pick any of these and we pick deuce and take me and because like that was we covered every kiss song at that point but those were like our two strongest so you know like take me's always been very special to me um, it's, he manages to make a lyric out of, uh, 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 uh yeah, like, and, re <laughs> and, re and repeat it a lot of times. <laughs> yeah. That's uh, a, that's a riff. He's singing the riff, you know? Yeah. Riff, it's awesome. Riff, probably when he was teaching the riff, Hey, check this out. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, you know? Right, yeah. yeah. I like it. No, um, just, just, I, I have a question, DK. You mentioned, uh, the approved by Kiss. And maybe I'm I'm ignorant here. Why did they uh, have to approve? Like, what what would make uh, them not approve a song? I think there was to make sure that it wasn't like songs that that were going to be played by the actual band an hour later, or that ah, like, I got it. You know, it was kind of like just a process of approval, and like when someone picked a song, it came off the list. So it was like kind of organized that way. So I right. went in first day, and I'm like, you know, some some of the bands were like silly and grabbing like rock and roll all night and Detroit rock scene. I'm like, no way, Deuce. Take me. Done. Those are ours. Those are the ones. Yeah, it was fun as fuck. So not to write off Let Me Go Rock and Roll at all. I'm going to go Take Me, but I think those are both like top tier Kiss songs. I like them both a lot. And actually, now that you mention that about being approved, and um, that reminds me of uh, Phil Collin, not Phil Collins, the Genesis guy, but Phil Collin from Def Leppard was in the band Girl with Phil Lewis from LA Guns. And they were oh, opening for me. Kiss. Yeah, that's right. They, they did, uh, this was in the late 70s, early 80s, and they did Do You Love Me? opening for Kiss and, and Kiss was pissed. I don't know if it was them or their management, but somebody was upset about that. You so I can that. see that. I think it was yeah, you don't want to show them up. No. I saw Phil Collin last night. I went to that big stadium. Oh, at, uh, at, at uh, Rogers Center. That's right. I saw that that was last night. I stayed till the bitter end. All my friends wanted to leave halfway through Motley. I'm like, no, man, I'm, I'm sitting this one in. Like, I, this, I, stay, I, like, I left during like, the outro of Kickstart. I was like, yeah, stayed the whole fucking thing. It was... It's a long show, man. It's like seven hours long with all those bands. It's crazy. Oh, yeah. Too much. That's a long it's, wow. it's a long fucking... Oh, because they're both... It's Def Leppard and Motley Crue. You, I'm sure the egos are hysterical uh, on that tour. Oh, yeah. uh, both bands are billed equal headliners completely, like an hour and 40 minute sets for both. I'm like, are, are, they, uh, are, they, are they switching headline spots? Someone told me they are, but like I saw Motley headline last night, and the way the show's formatted, I can't see it go down any other way. Like too much production to to change it night to night. Like yeah, it just the way I saw it last night, like, it made total sense. Even though, if I can be like fully honest, there are way more people in where I was sitting who knew all the words to all the Def Leppard songs than Motley. I was like the weird guy for knowing all the words to all the Motley songs. A lot of Def Leppard fans. Yeah. Well, Leopard sold more records. Yeah, just I mean. Way bigger, the two hit records are like two like actual hit records, not like just cult right, right. fucking you right, know, right. glam rock records, yeah. Um, more rock forensics. Uh, rock and roll. Um, let me go rock and roll. That live version. Bam, 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 bam. Yeah. Um, Midnight Rambler by Rolling Stones. Where he wow. says to him, um, yeah. Can't miss it. 
But I mean, they like the Suns. I mean, now bit, bitch is kind of the the um, inspiration for Deuce. If you think about it. Oh, I've never heard. I and I'm I'm I know Deuce uh, bitch very well. Yep. There's so many stones. The whole career is stones. It's uh, oh, totally. it's early I love, on. I love that Mr. Speed. Mr. Speed is can you hear me knocking? I love that. Oh, God, that's such a great ah, riff. I've, I've never. Oh my uh, God, Mr. Speed. Na, 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 na. You know it's crazy how many Kiss songs. I mean, uh, Chris, I don't have to ask you whether recorded or just like in bands. Kiss has just been your life, hasn't it? Oh, it's it's it's, it's always showed up the weirdest moments too. You never know. Yeah. Um, yeah. Especially how many, now, how many how many songs do you think you've ever recorded, like on tape, you know, with a band <laughs> released yeah, no, sure. maybe. Well, or like people have to, they, that's the one they want to jam with you if you're going to do a jam. Right. Like when we were out with Extreme, the last night we did two songs. We did um, Train Kept It Rolling and Shout It Out Loud. Um, and because they were just, the Extreme were huge Kiss fans. The guys in Second Kick played it off at the time, but they were huge Kiss fans. So uh, we would, uh, on the Devil Tour, um, we'd throw in Cold Gin uh, in the Encore. And just out of nowhere, and just to watch the faces of people go, "What the fuck? Did I, are they really doing that?" Because um, you know, everyone would. This is kind of like the common meeting point for so many people, you know. And yeah. and like thanks to the internet now, um, people will say like to me, "You were in a kiss. You were in a kiss tribute band." I'm like, well, yeah. What do you? What do you? Why you ask? <laughs> I've got but, you know, uh, I've got some cold gin posters around here somewhere. Oh sweet! Oh, yeah, nice. I have one. I have one. I have one. I have one too. Really? Yeah, I acquired. One? I'm a huge yeah. Kiss. Like uh, I think it's obvious everyone here is a fucking like Kiss freak. Uh, yeah. you know, Card carrying member. Um, yeah, I, I acquired at some point. Someone had a huge poster collection. I was like stoked. A bunch of like old school, the big '70s solo posters. Yep. Uh, yeah. But yeah. There was also like some fun stuff as well. And one of the fun things, there was like a Peter Solo, like the modern with the split makeup, whatever that album was called. Oh, was God. Like, some, more like fun kiss off. Out of, out of control? And out of control. And then, no, no, no. No, no, out of control with all the, was all the records flying out of the jukebox. Yeah, the modern. The modern Yeah, one yeah, yeah. Half, half Catman face. Yeah, and yeah, then, I remember. You know, one, one of the things was a cold, a cold gin poster. It's so cool. It's appearing live tonight, cold gin. It's so cool. It's like a... More like an oversized show poster. Yeah, yeah, that's it. What's that album called? It's called the band's just called Chris, right? It's called Chris, yeah. Yeah. That's when when we were doing Cold Gin, we were we rehearsed next to him. And Paul Shortino had a place in North Hollywood. We rehearsed next to Peter. Wow. And we listened to them struggle <laughs> struggle through hooligan and all that shit. And we're in the next room ripping through a live one, you know. <laughs> oh my god. Peter would get so fucking mad. Oh, he would treat us so fucking poorly. It was so fucking rude. And Mike Stone, who was later in um, Queensryche, he might be back in again. C coolest guy in the world. And he was in the band. He's just like, dude, we can hear you guys through the wall. And oh, my God, you fuck. <laughs> Don't tell the boss. But God, that fucking sounded amazing. It was awesome. We're just going, all right, cool. But yeah, Peter, fuck those guys. Fucking asshole. Fuck. Like, oh, That's the okay. best story right, I've again, heard all day. Again. I know. As Ooh. as as you guys were talking, I tallied the results. I've got them before I oh, uh, submit. Um, a little bonus thing: which uh, w which is the best album cover? Oh, that's hard too. Yeah, just as hard as as the songs, right? Well, can can I can I jump in on this one immediate? Fuck yeah! Well, you got to include the back. You got to include the back of them. The solo shot of Gene on the front of the live two. With the blue light and the fucking destroyed makeup, and and the lower jaw bite, and the yeah. little the little entrails, because it like blood, dried blood, kind of. It looks like entrails. <laughs> it's just like, oh my god! I mean, yeah. dude, yeah. that Best is the most ever. that is the most fucking metal thing I've ever fucking scene if that photo alone other than many many other like shots of gene with the blood and the old like 74 costume and shit you know th some of that shit where he's just soaked in blood he's sweat and then he's just red if that didn't influence uh you know every norwegian black metal band yeah no shit huh? or, uh, go and go all the way back to like venom and and like pre before it was even called black metal black metal to me is a record by venom yeah, yeah. um yeah. 
so before it was you know they put black and metal together as a as a box to throw music in that people don't understand right. so um also fucking where would blackie lawless be without shit like that where would king diamond be exactly but the thing is it's all it's all inclusive to this like gateway thing that i mentioned earlier i think gene doesn't realize maybe he does i don't know maybe he doesn't care i don't know but he's influenced so many people just because first you have the kabuki thing and then you have the demon and the horror show and the whole fucking thing but the way that photography has captured him it is like the reason that it's part of the reason that I like metal and extreme music or just even just dirty, crazy rock and roll, right? Is because of the images that have happened on, have, have what is the camera eye has captured all of this shit that makes me go, oh my God. I mean, I dream about those photos of Gene Simmons with just caked blood and makeup falling off. And it's just... The yeah. world of decadence summed up right there in a photograph has blown my mind since since I was, you know, six years old or something. I'm so, about to break your heart. But I'm, I'm break going, your heart. But I'm going to start as front cover. Okay, go ahead. I'm going with Kiss Alive. Okay. Let me tell you something that I don't know if this is uh, common knowledge. I only learned this very recently in the last two, three years or something. That picture of Gene, which I was going to bring that up. That's not a live photo. That was staged. Okay. It wasn't taken from a concert, which doesn't, doesn't. Even with all right. the like sweaty blood cake dry, it was, on, um, it's fake, huh? Wow. It's, it's, it's fake. Now I still love it. Um, but I, Dude. I couldn't believe that. I mean, you can see the other ones to me. It's pretty obvious that the other ones are not, uh, not from a concert. There's no sweater or anything, but, uh, now jeans, jeans was staged. Now for me, uh, I, I'm going to go alive. I mean, alive too, just because of that picture. And also, I, I like the uh, the the red and purple kiss. Um, yeah, always that was the, the red to yellow and the red to purple. I really like. Whereas this is a cool photo, of course, iconic. But nah, but the kiss logo, it's you know, it's it's lighted. Where um, but for me, just I'm, I'm going to go with alive, just because I love that picture of Gene so much. And I when I I didn't get that album until. I don't know when. Uh, I remember I lived in Montreal at the time, so I must have been probably. It came out when I was eight. I was so I was probably eight or nine, and I didn't have it right away. And I used to go with my parents to a mall or like a, a shopping center to buy groceries on Friday, every two Fridays or something. And I used to go to the to the record store there, and I used to just I was used to go to to the to the Kiss section and pull out the Alive Alive Two. And just just look at it in the store, but I couldn't buy it back then. I don't know if my parents didn't want to buy it or whatever. Was that but uh, was that was that where in Toronto? No, that this that was when I still lived in Montreal. So I was uh, very young. I moved out of Montreal when I was like nine or ten. So, uh, but yeah, so I'll, I'll go alive just for that picture of Gene, and I like the colors you mean, too. You mean alive two for you? Alive two, yeah. I like. I two. prefer alive two. Yeah, yep. I'm going yep. with alive one, and I'm just want to hear the other guys first. I did a quick. Uh, I did a quick Correct. rock and roll detective. Quick rock and roll detective. Um, all those photos on the front are from, it's a photo shoot. It's not live. They yep. did the photo shoot during the day before the concert in 77 in San Diego at, uh, at the San Diego Sports Arena. And uh, they said, so Gene's makeup, all the nerds are hilarious. Gene's makeup is slightly different. He augmented it slightly to make it look more intense. And all that blood and stuff is done up for a photo. Because people are like, hey, he never has that much blood on his, like, he never looks like that. How did they achieve that? And I'm looking at the photos from the photo shoot right now, and it's all broken down. Like, fucking nerds, man. Only this wow. bad. Love Dude, it. It, it's like Kiss is now treated like the Zapruder film, you know? Yeah. Yes. yes. It's wild. <laughs> That's great. But, but yeah, the, um, uh, so what are you going with, TK? Oh, I fucking love it. Uh, I like, yeah. I like the, I mean, it, <sighs> It's annoying to have to pick between the two because they're both so fucking iconic. But something really classy about Kiss Alive 2. I get it, Kiss Alive 1 and what it captures in that moment. And that's also a photo shoot, obviously. Right. But um, right. yeah, man, that Kiss Alive 2, that's like the band, like the the whole presentation of it all. Like that's that's what a fucking, that's what a that's live album is. Like, 
Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, like that's like for me like Aerosmith, like the live boot, like like for me that was like a brilliant album cover with the coffee ring on it, and that yes. everything like that. That's just same with Kiss Alive too. That's how a live album should look. It's awesome. Yeah, yeah. that yeah. era, that era blew blew my mind and still does. And there's a slew of live records, not just both of these, but like mid '70s Fog Hat Live. I fucking yeah. love. Scanner. Uh, unbelievable. Judas Priest Unleashed in the East. Just oh, keep yeah. on going. Budokan. Uh, Yes, Budokan. It it goes in Strangers of the Night, UFO. It's oh, really, yeah, it one of the just, best live albums ever. Dude, it almost hurts. Like, I get emotional when I start talking about this shit, which is why I have a podcast, right? Because it's fuck. I, I mean, dude. <laughs> I don't know how else to put it, but dude. Uh, yeah, well, my, it, it broke, those live records broke so many of those bands, too. Yeah, yeah. They were they a really big did. thing. Yeah. Well, and it's funny, oh, all the world's a stage. How about that one? Massey yeah. Hall. I think wow. I heard that. I think I heard that before I heard a lot of like uh, like Nugent Gonzo Double Live. I bought that oh, because man. I loved all the world's a stage so much. All right, baby. All right, baby. All right, baby. You see this guitar right here? Now, do you see it? <laughs> <laughs> what a nut job. Oh, Love my God. It. Yeah, who knew he was going to be? Wow. Yeah, too much. Yeah, no drugs, no alcohol, but we got this. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, and Chris, well, what do you say? What of the of the two? Which is which is your favorite? Which cover do you prefer? Uh, uh, well, let me go with some trivia first. Hit it. Uh, Alive two trivia. Well, both actually. The the picture of Paul on Alive one is a composite. That's his head from a different shot. You're fucking kidding. No, me. no, 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 no. Don't tell me that. Hold on. <laughs> from the horse's mouth. Wow. Yep. And so that yep. is a different head. Mm -hmm. DK, yep. get on it. So then, if you'll notice in the middle of a live too, if you open up the gatefold, right down the center, it's cut. And you see just the part of Paul's guitar neck. I do know that. I have heard that. Yep. That was, I, that was, uh, <laughs> I finally got to, this is the shit I ask people when I get to meet them. You know, okay, yeah. now remember, you know, what about this? What about this? What about this? And they kind of look at you like, holy shit. But then, but that's really cool. And people do that, you know, to us anyway, you know, it's like, well, holy shit, you're paying attention. This is awesome. Yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, I had to say a live one just because I loved that back shot. Just the, the, the oh, guys yeah. holding the poster and the whole, the, the show's getting ready to start. And these guys, we're so, we're so into this fucking band. We made this kind of shitty looking poster. It's really not drawn so well. But my God, we love them. And the band was smart enough to go, uh, you know who did it too. Get a picture of those guys. I can see them because, you know, they're out. Gene probably especially wandering around, you know, not letting them know that they were out in the crowd. So these four guys out there and they've got a poster. Find them, get a picture of that one. And um, it just, it said so much about what that, clearly what that concert was like. Because I lived in a small town in Ohio. There was no way my parents were going to drive me to see Kiss. Not a chance in fucking hell. But I can look at that photo and go, that's what that feels like. You know, whereas oh, like uh, Alive 2 is cool, but it was like, okay, they'd reach a certain pinnacle. They're like, okay, well, they deserve this. You know, when they're, they're muscling their way to the top with Alive. And there's something about that, you know, every man, uh, I'm part of this too. Um, and I own this as much as they do that I felt like looking at that photo. And and Gene's pictures or boots in, those, in the picture on the front were really cool. And they were clearly just for that photo shoot because he never wore them again anywhere. That sign, that sign still uh, exists. Those guys, those guys still have that sign. Yeah, yeah they do. They're, they're yeah, alive and well. I, I think they're like lawyers or some shit, and they're just yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah I've seen it. like people get photos, get photos with it. It's funny they have like a carrying case for it, and like it's like yeah, it's like oh like, yeah. yeah, I could see somebody trying to run off with it, you know, a piece of history, you know, like maybe the <laughs> biggest. I don't know if there are too many things that would be uh, more, at least not not musically related, not like guitars or. You know costumes that they've worn um that that could be I, uh the biggest I asked gene at that convention in 95 not only did i uh steal the microphone but they were i got to ask questions you know you got a question is like i asked gene i go gene i said where's that that base that you used on live photo where it's kind of like and it's not really black and it looks like it's metallic or it has glitter or something in it it was one of the it was a grabber and I can't, he goes, I don't know where that is. It's probably in a warehouse somewhere. And it's, he basically wrote it off like it was garbage. 
And I was yep. like, where the hell is that? Because that was, that was, I always looked at details like that. And I yep. never saw him use it again in oh, any photos. There's yes. very few photos of him playing that sort of like, it's like they painted it some kind of weird, odd color of gray, black, and then they spit glitter all over it or they mixed it in the paint. I don't know. It's weird. Well, they, that's, we asked them the same question. It's like, where is all that stuff? And Stan was like, we got it, but I can guarantee the necks are fuck if they've been sitting in a warehouse and been yeah. moved back from New York to here to back and forth. He said, I can guarantee you they're hosed, but we got them. Now, to that point, Tommy and Mark, Ferrari, our guitar player, had an apartment together. And I go over there one day, um, and there's like three or four cases stacked up, and they clearly say "kiss" on them. So I was like, I, I bison, I'm gonna open these. Okay, go ahead, pop it open. I just boom, boom, boom. The one where uh, the specter, where it had his face painted on it with the tongue coming around, yeah. that was that was in there. Oh, wow. The one from Alive, where he put studs on it. I think it's also a specter. He put a bunch of studs on it on the upper horn, that was in there, and um, and one of the other like big iconic bases so i'm pulling them out like you know, as quick as i can wow. and starting to just play you know hundred thousand years or you know she or whatever just boom, 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 boom put it back in just before tommy goes hey, hey you want to put that away bro before you know false no no i got it it's fine dude just let me just play this before you put it away please but yeah he they, they claim to still have all that stuff okay but they're also kind of they're, they're also not fools they they like uh, perpetuating the myth you know yeah or, or warehouses i mean like i know bands all have giant warehouses when you have that level of production and history but like oh, yeah. their warehouse i've never been there but like i have tons of people who've been there and they all say like fans who've gotten in and uh they all say it's like yeah it's it's as big as the f few photos that you've seen like their warehouses are fucking huge i think they do have everything They've got old props, old instruments, any of the shit that you didn't see sold at that Leland's auction. I think they like legitimately might still have. Oh yeah, yeah, I totally agree. Um, well, well, uh, maybe you know you could fix those old guitars up. That seems to be a thing you like to do, Chris. There you go. I'm yeah. and then and, and give them away. There you go. Come on, give them the guitars and rents. All right, I they... live. Uh, I'll give you my address. Yeah, yeah exactly. Actually, um, I should onto something. Today. Um, quick question for the group. Since we're not going to cover us, uh, the the fourth side of Alive Two, we got to mention it because there's a couple of really strong moments on there. Hey, uh, yeah. I'll go first. One is um, what is it? Da -na 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 -na. Is that larger, larger than, than life? Larger than life. Yeah. That is the seeker by the Who. Yeah, you're Check right. Da -na 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 -na. Yeah, totally. Ah, you're right. Yeah. Ah, yeah. All these uh, things that they're so obvious. I've never, uh, never, never put that together. Da -na 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 -na. Still yeah, love. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love Gene's vocal on that. Love it. Five and then seven, four to seven. I mean, that's just you can't. Do that's that. my favorite. Um, rocking in the USA. No, yeah. that's oh, you're talking about now. Oh, rocking in the USA. That's rocking in the yeah. USA. Yeah. Yep. And um, I'm flying in a seven forty seven, passing by the pearly gates, and I'm coming real close to heaven. And my guitar just can't wait. It just can't wait. Killer song. Yep. Ooh. Right, and then. <laughs> um then um killer killer cover of the dave clark five anyway i love that just yeah i like it a lot on. their only other cover that i think is that good is their one of rock and roll radio that's on the, the oh the ramon song that's a that they nobody that, that, that kind of went by the wayside you never really hear people talking about that that's really really good that. and i don't know oh, if, if you guys know about no. this they they did a cover of um um a uh, Paul McCartney and Wings song. Uh, really? Oh, what? Uh, just a minute. I've got it on my phone. I listened to it. I love that song. Oh. It's um. Yeah, Jason, you got to hear rock and roll, uh, um, rock and roll radio because they switch off vocals, and it's just it's like they're fucking seventeen years old again. They just rip right through it. It's unbelievable. Ven Venus and Mars rock show. Really? Wow. I've never heard that. Might have to edit this out. You don't know yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to get strikes on YouTube, but it's um yeah, oh it's it's so so right. good. It was it was from a call Paul McCartney tribute, The Art of okay. McCartney. Wow. I, I think it's just Paul and Gene with two studio guys, but it, okay. I mean it sounds like Kiss. And they they trade vocals too, like Jason was just saying. Wow. wow. Awesome. That's what like back to Hard Luck Woman. I thought Garth Brooks cover of it was really good. Yeah, I liked yeah. it too. I agree. I agree. 
Well, it's it ju- it proves that it's a good song. I mean, nothing against Garth Brooks. The guy is talented, but the point uh, that that it's- crossover was made there, it didn't like there was still it was, it was hard. The song came out shiny no matter what. I mean, part yeah, of me what, is what, part what, of me is saying you have an accomplished musician who knows what the fuck is going on. Maybe they're a fan, or maybe they're not. If they did a good version of it, it's a great song no matter what. It's going to be good right. on anybody's right. table. Right. So, yep, it's no cut scratch fever, but I, I'll do my best. Wow, <laughs> that's, that's really to good. This day, to this day, man. Um, but and by, by the way, just um, th- this has been a blast. Thank you guys for having me with you. But um, yeah. We could probably go for four four hours on this easy. Hysterical, like yeah. And my plan to was to do the the six stu- the studio albums. My God, we we need to set aside a whole season for that. We need, uh, you know, we'll do that in the winter. Yeah, I'm glad, yeah, yeah. I'm glad yeah, it worked yeah. out like this, and uh, and ditto. It was it was nice to hang. And with and you guys. yeah, before we wrap it up, let me give you the uh, the total. So out of sixteen songs, um, I'll do these in the order that I had them in my my chart here, and I've got mix suggestions up here. Um, I, I had, I had a live, my, is my favorite 11 to five. Um, Jason was, had a live, we all had a live. I was 11 to five. Jason was 12 to four. Chris was 11 to five. Same as me. And DK was 10 to six. Ah, DK was the most even keeled. Oh, mm-hmm. mm-hmm. uh, yeah. I, uh, I think it's crazy that we actually left, like, you know, somewhat left out that D side. Cause that D side's as everyone i'm sure agrees like stands up to the rest of the record it's, it's super fun awesome uh, yeah and it's a smart idea they didn't do the songs they were still doing live from the first one so let's do four or five you know it's great other shows but i think that's where you start hearing anton come in is those songs mm-hmm. yes i think what's the a song is rocket ride right yep yeah she yeah, wants a rocket, rocket ride she wants a rocket song. ride i don't think that's peter no, I, because because of the I know Ace played bass on it for sure. He played. Right. That's uh, rip it out, rip it out, yeah. And then that pick slide, the pick scrape, yeah, coming up, going into the solo. I know we're talking about guitars you know now, not drums. You know when he's coming in, he's coming back in out of the. I'm still on Anton Rocket Ride. When he's coming back in the shaka taka 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 into the solo right there out of the drum stuff yeah i swear he's doing some double kick there with the snare or oh, either maybe maybe he's pumping right foot i don't know he's cheater pedal don't know it was no, i didn't have to right. then. but 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 listen to it man i hear like i hear like you know i hear foot yeah i hear oh, foot with the do 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 it's crazy by the way we we saw him in new york at the ritz meaning ace and and anton got up and did rip it out and I don't know who was playing with the guy who was playing with him at the time. I think played for Sabotage later, um, so he's a good drummer. And oh, Anthony got up Matthew. there, and all of a sudden, holy shit! I mean, you could tell. Okay, he played that. It was so just on it. Just the band came alive for one song, and then okay, and then Anton's gonna go away. I'm like, wait, wait, no, no, wait, wait, keep Anton, keep Anton. Um, there scary. was also, um, if you listen on, I think. Here's, an, here's maybe another argument for another another day is that some of the songs that were left over from their solo records, they used on Dynasty. Because if you listen to Save Your Love. Yeah, totally. Talk, to, talk about double kick patterns. Yeah. That's some badass kick pattern. And a lot of people <laughs> wouldn't even like recall like there being double kick. Okay, name name one song that has Kiss double kick on it. Kiss fans would go, what do you mean? They don't play double kick. Totally. totally. You know, like, the chorus in uh, Your Glory, I shall protect oh, yeah. me. That's all. Oh. That's Eric Hart. Yeah, I love right. that shit. That's a oh. double. That for me, when you say double bass and kiss, that's the first thing I think of. But what who, is that song? Who, the, oath, the, the Oath. The Oath. Oh, right. Oh, okay, that's Eric, right? Yeah, Eric yep. Hart. Yeah. 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 But I mean, um, I think King of the Mountain is double kick, isn't it? I'm the kid. Yeah, full. Yeah, that has huge, huge drum intro. Very eight, total eighties drums. Yeah, and maybe no, no, no. Also, or sorry, yeah, yeah, no, no, no. I think maybe. Exciter is, I think too. I love Exciter. That's a great song. The band. Look it up. Good record. Yeah, look it up. It's a great record. Look it up. It's a killer album. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. And by but the yeah, way, the, did did anybody speaking of um, Mick mentioned about songs being left over? And now they were talking about live albums. Did anybody see this thing that came out last week? This uh, lost a letter that Gene wrote to Eric Carr in 1980. And you know Gene's handwriting is awesome, right? You've seen it in the letter and the the gatefold and live. And um, he wrote a letter to Eric Carr, and it said, um, "Dear Eric, uh, this is a, a gift to you for your help helping us during the '79 80 tour." And it was a, he had given Eric Carr. Uh, he said, "This is a copy of our unreleased 1974 live album." He said, "The only people that have it now are us in the band, you, Bill Coin." And somebody else. You guys didn't see this. This was kind of a big no. thing in, in Kiss nerd circles. Last, I think it was Whoa. about a week ago. Uh, this handwritten letter from Gene to Eric Carr. That uh, no. so, there, so I guess the, the the point is that there's according to Gene uh, an unreleased 1974 live Kiss album. Wow. So pretty that's cool. that's got to be what? Um, maybe the first two. Yeah. Yeah, hotter. Uh, Dress to Kill was early '75 or late. No, yeah, no early. I would, I would say it's hotter than hell in the first one, right? Yeah. Or, yeah, yeah, first two. Oh, yeah, right. first one was yeah. January '74. Hotter than hell was later that summer, I think. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, yeah it would have been. Yeah, would have been two. from the Hotter Than Hell tour. Wow. It's out there. Maybe uh, maybe there will be a Sam Loomis of uh, audio that that is going to put something out, or maybe he'll, you know, if he has it, maybe somebody will put it. To, to YouTube or something. Who knows if anybody has it or not, but I never even heard of it until uh, nope. last week. Well, like half of that Sam Loomis stuff, I'd never heard of that. And the, I mean, the, the archival stuff we got for the cold gin rehearsals, we got from them, you know? So um, that's how Kurt Gooch got a hold of that stuff because Anthony gave it to him, you know, where in 92 or whatever. But that's how we learned all that shit was watching it. They lent it to us. So I had no idea all that other shit was still in there. Like, oh my God, look at this. And every time he turned around, I was like, what is that? What is that? What is that? Oh my God. You know, what else have they got? But how did he get it? Was my question. How did he get that shit? It's all uh, it's mysterious and as well. hot, hot topic these days. As Chris and I have talked about this for the last few weeks or so. It's a big uh, topic. But I'll wrap it up now. Uh, we, the four of us, can wrap it up quickly, uh, more lovey dovey when we log, when we. Uh, uh, cut it off here but for everybody viewing thank you thank you to uh, Jason and Chris and DK for being a part of this my first time doing something like this uh, I love talking about Kiss I'd rather talk about Kiss than probably just about anything in the world music in general but especially Kiss uh, so for anybody who watched it God this has been a long time I don't know how many people are going to watch the whole thing I loved every minute of it Nobody. <laughs> yeah but uh, thanks to you guys thanks to anybody who is watching thank you and uh, we'll have to do this again or something similar. I have some more ideas, things I'd like to do, KISS related. Sure. Um, DK, I hope to see you. Um, maybe we can't say too much, but I uh, hope to see you next year. In Mexico and, uh, next year, yeah. I hope so. Good. And uh, Chris you come and Jason. up here for a show? I know you come up here sometimes. If you're ever up here for a show, let me know. I will. And uh, so, so thanks to everybody, the, these uh, three guys, everybody who watched it. The Kiss Army and Kiss themselves for for giving us uh, us people something to talk about. Thanks and uh, see you next time.